Hey guys, welcome back to another video. I'm Pyrrhic. And I'm Victoria. And this is the ninth installment in our Lore Olympus analytical video series where we cover every single detail of the comic for your viewing pleasure in excruciating detail. Sometimes at the cost of our own uh, sanity. Sanity, yes. And so uh, in part nine today, we are going to attempt to cover from episodes 134 onwards. Yes. As you know, we only were able to cover three episodes. Yeah. <laughs> Last time. We had a lot to say. Yes, uh, a lot of interesting theories, a lot of uh, fun speculation, and uh, really looking forward to uh, going through some of the pretty pretty interesting things that happen in these next few chapters You here. mean the Zoom call? The Zoom call. Is that what you're referring to? The Zoom call? Minty and her antics. Oh, Minty <laughs> embarrassing yourself out of the comic? <laughs> oh, it was very, uh, very... Um, Secondhand embarrassment. A lot of secondhand embarrassment there. So, uh, yeah, lots of stuff to cover in this next batch of chapters. Um, anything you have to say before we get started, or no, All no, right. let's uh, let's get into it. Yeah. So, in episode one thirty four, uh, called maybe she's both, and this is the aforementioned Minthy character assassination slash embarrassment episode. The last episode ended with Hermes coming to the door. Uh, ostensibly to bring Persephone to Zeus. Um, and I actually re remembered slash realized something at this point, which is that Hermes, uh, well, shout out again to Kapu who brought this up. In the episode where Hermes was trying to uh, intervene between Minthy and Thanatos at the Underworld Corporation, he basically let it slip that he knew all about the Act of Wrath when part of his covenant with Demeter was that he would never tell anyone about the Act of Wrath. Yeah. So he was like, why are you telling Hades about the Act of Wrath? Maybe that's what he's into. By saying that, he's like inadvertently, not even inadvertently, needlessly telling everyone that he knew about it the whole time. Yeah. Because up until the point where he walks in on them and says like, oh, maybe Hades is into that, they didn't know that he already knew. No. So he's basically violating his covenant that he has with Demeter right there. Up until that point, the only source of information for the Act of Wrath for them was Helios. And then when uh, Hermes comes in and says, like, oh, why are you telling Hades? Maybe he likes that. He just basically violated whatever agreement he had with Demeter. Yeah. When he hadn't prior to that. For yeah. no reason, because it doesn't change the story in any way. And in a later chapter, I guess we'll get to it when we get to it, but um, Zeus somehow knows that he was involved. In yeah, that. Zeus somehow... Who told him that Hermes was involved? That confused the crap out of me. <laughs> yeah. Because so. I my other question, in apart from him exposing that he knew... When he did that. Mm -hmm. My other question in this chapter and in the last chapter when he comes to their door to get Persephone for Zeus is if he was willing to go behind Zeus's back for money to help Demeter keep her secret, he was involved in the conspiracy, right? Yeah. So then why is he running around doing Zeus's errands and bringing Persephone to Olympus in like in this chapter? Like does he follow Zeus's orders or not? If he's following Zeus's orders here, why didn't he tell Demeter, hey, I can't do that. That would violate whatever I have with Zeus and put my job in jeopardy. Yeah. Like, how much money did she even give him? And it's not like we've seen Hermes being poor. No. Where it's like he really needs the money. Or, and then it's not like we've seen him being, like, super greedy. Where it's like, oh, he'll do anything for money. No. Like, I've honestly no reason. Like, it feels like the money motivation was just like, Rachel was like, oh, I need Hermes to betray Zeus and be in on the conspiracy. Why, why would he do that? Oh, Demeter just pays him a ton of money. Like, it's just like the, the most surface lazy motivation you could give anyone to yeah. do anything it's just money and the interesting <clears throat> thing as well is that when it is brought to zeus's attention somehow that hermes is involved the punishment that he gets is like not extreme at all so when minthy uh thanatos and thetis are all saying if this plan backfires we're going to be in serious trouble it's going to be all on us nothing really happens to anybody who's involved the yeah, only person who so. seems to be getting any sort of punishment is Persephone. Yeah. Like, for some reason, Zeus is, like, obsessed with the idea of Persephone betraying him. But when he finds out that Hermes did it, he just sends Hermes to go collect her. Like, what is this? Like, yeah. I still don't know why Zeus wants to get Persephone so badly. He says it later, and it's, like, stupid. It's, like, a, a kind of, To keep of, like, the status quo. Yeah. But it's, like, like, Eros stomped all over you with his act of wrath in episode 30-something. You were just willing to let him go after sleeping with Aphrodite. Yeah. And then Hermes went behind your back with this conspiracy and you're willing to let Hermes go and presumably Demeter like we haven't seen anything of Demeter no nobody arrested her nobody's even looking for her so presumably nobody cares about Demeter either it's literally just Persephone but then it's like why yeah why does he have it out for Persephone what's the reason it's not like Apollo like got in his head and poisoned him I don't understand there's no like justification there's no there. justification for why he hates Persephone so much it's very frustrating it's very weird um, so then, yeah, so basically this is starting off with Hermes saying, or Hades saying, no, I'm not going to hand her over. 
And then Hermes is just sweating. Uh, Why is he so sweaty? I don't know. I guess because he's confronting Hades and he's like non-confrontational. But again, it's like, it's not set up. There's no setup. There's no like stakes. There's no like Hermes thought bubble. Like, oh God, I don't want to have to go up against this guy. No. And I thought he was outside. Yeah. And it's <sighs> cold outside. No, but like they both look like they're in the same place because he has the same blue background behind him. Yeah, it's just you don't even see like. Where I don't even know from. where these people are. I thought Hermes was outside. Yeah. Did he? Did? Let me just go back to the last chapter for a second. Hermes. Did he is, let him in? No, I don't think so. He's <coughs> outside of the door because then he goes and flies away. Like, I thought he was behind like a glass door. Yeah. Knock knock. Yeah, he's behind a glass door. Yeah. What is going on? But what's there behind him? But now there's nothing between them. No. When did he open the door? That's glass. Yeah. Between them right there. Mm -hmm. Is it not? It is. What, what happened to his hand? Why is it backwards? There's no doorknob either. Yeah, like what is going on? It's glass. Yeah. It's reflective. Is it a window and he's like flying? And, and like, I, I guess it's like a sliding door or is it a window? His hand is on the wall <clears throat> there. No, I think that's a curtain. Oh. But there's no curtain in the previous shot. No. I don't even know what's going on. And now there's a curtain all of a sudden? Um, Hades turns and Hades, his eyes. Yeah, Hades. So Hades, uh, basically, he's all sweaty. And then Hades is like, it, that's how it's going to be. I'm not going to give you Persephone. And then you hear Persephone come up behind them, Hermes. And Hermes is really sweaty and Hades turns. But again, like both of their eyes are facing directly at the audience. They're not facing towards Persephone. No. Wherever she's supposed to be. Because Persephone is way shorter than both of them. Mm -hmm. So they should both be looking down. Instead, like, you have this really creepy composition where Hades' eyes is very center of the frame. Yeah, they're both looking at you, the reader, and yeah. it's very uncanny and strange. And uh, in the next panel, Persephone just no clips so that she's around Hades' height. You never see her walking up behind them, you know, like, framing uh, a shot of her coming in or anything. She's just all of a sudden right next, right next to Hades, and she says, Hermes, have you seen my mother? And then nothing in the next panel, completely pointless. Not yet, sorry. I'll go with you. Corey! Uh, it's my fault he's in trouble. Void panel. Right? And then you have, like, this... This panel in, implies, if you, like, up the brightness, this panel implies that they're actually outside. But we never saw either Hades or Persephone open the door and step outside. It's like people are teleporting left, right, and center all over this comic. Yeah. And uh, what you started saying, um, basically, where she says... I need to go find my mother, and then I'll go with you. It's my fault he's in trouble, right? Like, why are you seeking affirmation from Hermes when you know that he's, like, he's, you're the reason he's in trouble because you're the one who committed the act of wrath. Especially because asking him, I'm the reason you're in trouble, right, is what gets him to say, I can't <clears throat> do this. The implication being uh, not for the fact that she said, right, then he would have no guilty conscience about it. Because she's guilt tripping him, basically. You know, she's saying, like, oh, yeah, like, I'm in trouble, uh, no, you're in trouble because of me, right? And he's going like, wait, I can't do this. No, it's not because of you. It's because of my own decisions. Like, that's the deciding factor that gets him to, like, uh, decide not to bring her to justice. Yeah, it's very manipulative. The way she talks is constantly framed as manipulative because up until this point, she was watching the stupid VHS with Hades. Yeah. She had no concern for her mother until Hermes suddenly showed up. Like, are we supposed to, are we meant to believe that uh, Persephone literally did not think of Demeter once. Not once since the arrest warrant came out because the arrest warrant covered both of them. She didn't think of her once until Hermes showed up. Like, either she's really stupid, and again, she has the brain of a, a risen piece of dough, thumbprint, it disappears. Or, um, you know, like, she just doesn't care and she's only doing this to concern troll yeah. and look magnanimous in every situation and then just guilt trip people and manipulate them into doing what she wants. Yeah, she asked uh, Hades about Demeter once when they were on those um, Chesterfield sofas. And she said, oh, I'm worried about my mom. But that's that's it. She didn't try to call her there, or anything. Seven more chapters go by mm -hmm. and she never tries to contact her once. She's not even there during the Zoom call and Persephone doesn't even go like, oh, where's my mother? No. She doesn't even ask Zeus, did you find my mother? Nope. Where is she? Nope. Like, she, she's such a dick. She's such a dick, dude. And, like, the worst is that she's, like, that, that person that every, like, if you have a brain, you know that they're a douche. Yeah. And then everyone else seems to think, oh, my God, they're so great. What are you talking about? It's, it's the, like, if you've ever experienced yeah. that in real life, where it's, like, I know so many people in real life where it's, like, oh, my God, this person's a total dick. I can tell. 
And then everyone's like, everyone else is like, oh, what are you talking about? They're so great. That's what it's yeah, like. It's, That's what it's like. And then from, just like, like from a writing perspective, like not even talking about how um, insufferably she's coming across like unintentionally in terms of like a social situation and what is and isn't socially appropriate. It's the same thing where we're saying like top of mind, you know, top of mind, dude. Like, how do you keep losing track of these things? Like, how are you not thinking about it constantly? Like, what else is going through your head right now? I mean, Rachel can't even keep track of when they're behind a solid pane of glass and when they're outside. So how can you expect her to keep track of the main character's concern for her own mother? Oh it's God. not like that's relevant to the plot. Yeah. It's, it's not like she made the decision to have both Demeter and Persephone included in the arrest warrant when she had no desire to cover the mother aspect of things. She had no desire to bring Demeter back into the story, so why even include her in the arrest warrant? Nobody was holding a gun to her head to include that in the story. No, I think it's because it just kind of gets rid of her, because the first question would be, well, how come Demeter isn't stepping in to help uh, Persephone when, when she gets found? Once they actually find her, how come she's not showing up at Hades' house and saying, hey, give me back my daughter? Um, it was a convenient way to write her out of the story. Dude! The first thing Hecate should have done, once they found Persephone and stabilized her, was find Demeter and bring her to Hades' house. Yeah. So that Hades can shelter both of them. I don't understand why Hades isn't looking for Demeter, other than he's a creep and he wants to keep Persephone away from Demeter because he wants Persephone all to himself because, again, he's a creep mm -hmm. and he hates Demeter. Yeah. Like, I honestly don't understand why nobody's looking for Demeter. No. Neither Persephone, nor Hades, nor Hecate. I mean, it doesn't make any sense. Nor me. Zeus. Nor Zeus. He's the one who issued the arrest yeah, warrant. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. So. So then she says, right, and then he says, I can't do this. Um, lazy copy-paste panel. I'm only in trouble because of my own choices in the void. But also, like. What's he doing? I don't know. Why he's is he like, tugging on his shirt? He's trying to pat his head and rub his stomach at the same time. Why? I don't know. But anyway, um. This is so stupid because it's not his choice. It wasn't his choice to participate in the uh, in the conspiracy. Demeter basically forced him to and then paid him money after the fact. Yeah. And then being roped in by Zeus, again, he's employed by Zeus. It's not his choice. He didn't ask for the assignment to go after Persephone. And he wasn't even the one who revealed the information to Minthi and Thanatos. They got it from Helios. And yeah, then he spilled the beans after the fact. But like, what are you talking about? He's not in trouble because of his own choices. No. His choices have nothing to do with what's going on right now. He's not even in trouble. No, he's not in trouble. So, and the, the, the arms of two totally different lengths, it's just, it bothers me. Because not only is it in that panel where he's patting his head and rubbing his stomach, but it's the second one too. It's like, why does his hair keep changing? I don't know, like, what direction the wind is supposed to be going in, but it's, like, the and art. And why is he wearing, like, prison jumpsuit? He's wearing all the the Kanye West collection. I know! Gap. I know! Now that Kanye is no longer partnered with he, he started dumpster diving when, yeah. Yeah, when, when the collection went to the trash. It's just really, and his hands are so poorly drawn. <clears throat> it's, like, that's supposed to be his... I don't know what he's doing, like, thumb or something? Blocking-wise, like, this body language is very confused. And the, the 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 composition is literally like he's kneecapped yeah. and in the void. It's like why? And what is the yeah? It's he's... it's just poor composition. Like if you don't want to draw bodies, then draw faces. Seriously, like she does so, such little face close ups that it feels like you're at such a huge distance from the characters. Yeah, like there's very little facial close ups in this comic. The only times there's facial close ups now are when she does like the copy paste of the previous panel and then zooms in. No. I There's mean, very little close-ups of the face that are actually drawn. What I'm thinking right now, looking at this panel, what would have been better is if he uh, turned around when he said, I'm only in trouble because of my own choices. And then if you're, if okay, so lean back a little bit. So you're Persephone and then I'm Hermes now. And I go like, forget I was here. Yeah. Like this. Yeah. And it's and nice and like, close. Oh my God. Yeah, nice Hermes. and close detail. And he could be like, forget I was here like that. Yeah. And then you're in the background there because he can kind of mumble it and then you create distance between the characters now. I mean, it's basic It's basic composition. It's basic yeah. film language. Like, anybody who reads comics would know. I mean, what is... Forget I was here. Like, what is that? <laughs> like, it's horrible. It looks terrible. So, it looks yeah, really dumb. It's very distracting. Because um, if you look at the panel out of context, you could never in a million years match up all the dialogue. Well, not only that, his facial expression has nothing to do with that pose either. No. It's like it's like the the opposite of visual storytelling, where the visual actually conflicts with what the dialogue tells you. Yeah. 
So then... Underwhelming panel. <laughs> an extremely <laughs> underwhelming panel of Persephone. I don't even know if she's supposed to be standing in front of Hades, but she looks really small compared to him. And then, like, Hermes, like, they just drew him. And then, like, drew some lines around him to make it look like he was flying. It doesn't mm. look like he's setting off or anything. Yeah. Also, he used to have wings. They just didn't want to draw the wings. I guess not. <sighs> so lazy. So lazy. And the composition's awful. I'm sorry. I know that wasn't the smartest move. And now there's, like, lines around them. Are they supposed to be right next to the door again? That's the door frame, yeah. I don't understand what's going on. I know you feel responsible, just be careful. But, but that, like, that entire exchange, I'm sorry, I know that wasn't the smartest move. I know you feel responsible, just be careful. Reading the, it one after like the other. Like, he's not even responding to what she's saying. Again, it's like, if, if any of you read the latest chapters, the, we're filming this right after 222 came out, and I swear to God, it's like, it's like generated by AI or something. The dialogue is so, so disconnected so unpersonable it feels like zuckerberg talking to zuckerberg in the metaverse where it's like they're talking past each other it's very self-centered dialogue and then what they're saying is consisted of meaningless platitudes and like oh this sounds good smoking these meats but it doesn't have any meaning no there's no meaning and it doesn't move the story forward at all I'm sorry, I know that wasn't the smartest move. I know you feel responsible, just be careful. What would have been better? if, Like, I think her saying I'm sorry, I know that wasn't the smartest move, doesn't even have anything to do with Hermes. Why not say, do you think she's he's going to tell Zeus that I'm here? No, do you but think Zeus is going to send somebody else? Why did she say, I'm sorry, I know that wasn't the smart? She didn't do anything. No. She just said, Hermes, I'll go with you. And then Hermes said, no. And yeah. then he flew away. <laughs> what? What do you, what do you mean? Persephone, you did nothing! <laughs> it's not like she, like, uh, Hades is like, Persephone isn't here. And then she stepped out of the shadows and she was like, I'm here, Hermes. Yeah. Tells Zeus not to, like, she wasn't the one who spilled the beans. Hades already spilled the beans. He said, yeah. yes, she's here. I'm not giving her up. Yeah. So what What did Persephone, what did she say that did anything? It, it made no impact. Like, if she hadn't even come out of the shadows, nothing would have changed. No. Because Hermes didn't even want to be in there in the first place. Mm -mm. So what the heck? What, What is going on? Yeah, so if you're going to keep, I know that wasn't the smartest move, Hades would be like, it's not your fault. I'm sure Zeus is going to send somebody else or Hermes is going to go back to Zeus. Hades should and... say, what do you mean that wasn't the smartest move? I mean, that's what a logical person would say. Like, what are you talking about? You didn't do anything. You didn't you know? do anything. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, she should have said something like, um, I know you don't agree with me, and we should have talked this over before he came came in. Yeah. But if they want to take me, I was going to let them take me because I don't want to cause too much trouble for you. You know, like if Zeus find comes comes over tomorrow, because she should say this. She should be thinking now. Hermes knows where I am. She should be like, if Zeus comes here tomorrow, I don't. I want to go without a fuss. I want to let them take me and yeah. pay the consequences for my actions. And then Hades should say. Um, I don't necessarily think that's the wisest idea based on how I know Zeus is thinking about this, but I'll support you as best as I can. Like, I mean, it's, it's again, it's freaking basic. It's like, I, I, I don't even know what these characters are talking about. They're standing in a freaking void. The, their background, the backgrounds make no sense. They're teleporting from panel to panel. They're looking at the audience instead of at each other. You know, like, what is going on? I feel like I'm freaking... I feel like I'm in the Manchurian Candidate or Clockwork Orange and yeah. somebody's pried my eyes open and forced me to read something that makes no sense and try to make sense of it. See, because the thing is, like, just as, like, a, for instance, like, when you have to read this on your phone and you see the panel and you have to scroll before you see the next panel, this is Hades standing by himself in the void. You don't know if he turned around all the way or if he went to Persephone like this and then went back the facing the way he came from because you don't have that other panel to see the sequential thing. When you have a comic like Watchmen or any print comic and you can see the sequential paneling, it's so much easier to see what's going on and it's so much easier for the author to keep things consistent. But, but it's, it's not even the, the fault of the format. It's no. the fault of the author because it is. we've created comics with this format 
And they're not this confusing. But it's it's the fault of the format and of the author that other people don't catch into this. I think it, the, the format, it, I mean, I don't know if that's what you meant, but I think the format, if anything, helps obscure it does, how yeah. bad this that's is. What, that's what it is. If you had all of these panels cut out and put side to side, you'd be like, oh, what is going on? Like, the geospatial configuration just makes no sense. Because... In the Western world, we're used to reading from left to right. Yeah. So if you're reading top down, it kind of messes with your synapses in yeah. terms of putting things together sequentially. I think it definitely muddies. I think that's why it's so difficult to digest mm -hmm. vertical scroll. It muddies the way that you perceive time. Yeah. So when you're what when you're scrolling up and down and reading up and down instead yeah. of left to right. Your brain is not interpreting that in the same way as sequential images in a dialogue, no. the same way as it would be if you were reading left to right. And it doesn't help that there's no backgrounds at all. No. So you have no frame of reference what? for where they are. Not only that, I don't know if you've noticed this, but from the beginning of the comic to now, this, the white space has gotten much bigger. It has. So yeah. you can't see a panel. You can't see them one you after the other. You can't see them one after the other on the same page no. unless you're reading it on your desktop or laptop like I do, and then making it smaller. Yeah. And seeing them side by side and going like, what the F is going on? Yeah. Because like, the, like just reading for this, for this, um, this video, I, I just read, like, I read these panels, or I've read these chapters before, obviously, but I just read them again. Yeah. Before we sat down and filmed. There were so many times that I had to go to a previous chapter because it's all taking place on the same day. This is still Saturday. <laughs> yeah. This is still Saturday. It's yeah. all... Seven chapters, seven weeks, two months go by. It's still freaking sad. Not even, not even seven chapters. Ever since she sat down to narrate her version of the Act of Wrath. So chapter, episode 130 to 140 is one day. Yeah. That's ten chapters. That's two and a half months. Yeah. And it's all the same time span. And I have to keep paging back and forth because I can't keep track of what's going on. Yeah. I can't keep track of basic stuff. Like at one point the dog comes up and then suddenly in the next panel... She's holding the dog like this. And I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Where did that dog come from? Was it in a previous panel? Yeah. The stupid glass door. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Where are they standing? I thought Hermes was behind a window. Yeah. Why is he suddenly nose to nose with Hermes? Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's like, it's freaking, it feels like gaslighting. Yeah. It feels like every panel <laughs> is gaslighting you. Yeah. I, I'm being emotionally manipulated <laughs> by this comic. Yeah. And it, it's not a pleasant experience. No, it's very, it, it really is. It makes it a lot more difficult to read because you're like, wait a second, when did that happen? Like, where are they? How much time has passed? And then when characters say things, like later when Daphne's talking about Apollo. Oh my god. It's just terrible. It's like the basics. We're totally screwed up here. And it's because I I personally feel like reading this, there's no way the author cares about the story if, if they were making this many careless mistakes, right? If she's making this many she's careless make, mistakes. This is, so up until this point... I was surprised when we read all of season one yeah. that there were very few timeline mistakes. Yeah. Because even though I don't think she kept track of her timeline, there weren't that many mistakes because she was very vague about it. And now in this batch of 10 episodes, I think she's already made at least two or three mistakes when it came to the timeline. Yeah. Because she has them going to work on a Saturday. Like that's a normal thing that people do. Minty and Thanatos are at the office. Yeah, they're at the office on a Saturday. And then she has Daphne saying, like, it's been days, but it's been, like, one day. Yeah. So she's made at least two mistakes with the timeline. And then this whole thing with um, the Zoom call and, like, the, the, the bath sequence. And, like, she forgot that Demeter existed. No. We haven't even circled back around to the handkerchief. That was, like, 15 episodes ago. Yeah. 15, over 15 episodes ago. Maybe 16 episodes ago. Up to episode 140. It was, like, 25 episodes ago. Yeah. Still haven't circled back to the handkerchief. Still haven't circled back to the cake. What happened to the cake? Her birthday came and went, and I yeah. thought it was going to be a bigger plot point because she was making a cake for it. Yeah. It never went anywhere. No. It's really weird. Like, this was, this wouldn't happen in season one. No. It wasn't this blatant. Okay, so back to the comic. I've got to head into work for a bit. Bro, it's Saturday! What are you... He checks his watch? Like, his watch is going to tell him, like, oh, time to go to work, buddy. No, it's Saturday! No. What do you mean? But the thing that's confusing as well is that if he didn't go to the office, he wouldn't have been a part of that Zoom call. Would that Zoom call have still have happened if he wasn't at work? No, because she only thought of that Zoom call in the episode where it happened. Yeah. That answers your question for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he only goes to the office and has the Zoom call because she had him in the office and she didn't know what to do in that episode. No. I mean, 
in earlier episodes, you literally show Zeus teleporting into his house for brunch. So I don't understand why he didn't teleport into his house. But um, For the Zoom call? No, just in general, to get Persephone. Now that Hermes has confirmed that Persephone is at Hades' house, Zeus can teleport there and be like, I'm not going to extradite you, but I'm going to let you know that this is what we're planning on doing. And if it comes to extra, either you can come willingly or I will extradite you. But I'm giving you the option right oh, now. Oh, Hermes. Not Hermes, I'm saying Zeus. Oh, Zeus. Uh, sorry, I was thinking of Hades. No, Zeus teleported into Hades' house for brunch. When Yeah, I don't know why Zeus hasn't shown up yet. Why didn't he send Hermes? No. I don't understand. Like, I literally, if he's so pressed, if it's so personal, if he's so mad, and then when they do the Zoom call, she acts like he can't do anything, but yeah. he can. It's his brother. He yeah. can just show up to his house. He can. He's done it loads of times before. Yeah. He slept at his house in, like, episode 80-something. Yeah. So I don't understand why he doesn't just teleport there. No. And say, F you, Hades, open this door right now. Now it's personal. No, even Hera teleports there later in the batch of seven, ten episodes, you know? Yeah, I mean, with the Zoom call. Yeah. And then he says, uh, why don't you get some more rest, take a bath or something, which is just patronizing. Yeah, he looks like she smells in that panel, like, take a bath or something. Yeah. Like, it stinks. Well, I mean, no, it's like, it's like, you know what it's like? It's like telling a woman that you have in your house, why don't you, like, keep yourself busy? Why don't you, like, bake a cake or something? Yeah. Like, it's so dismissive. And it just, like, when he was saying, like, the owner of this comb this, the owner of this comb that, I don't know anything about her. It's like, the first thing he said is take a bath or something. Like, you clearly don't know her at all. You don't even know what her hobbies are. No, right before this, they were having the, the sad Hades story time in the library. With the VHS. So, well, not with the VHS in the library when he was talking about being eaten by Kronos. And then they watched the VHS together. Well, they watched that before. before oh, they did? It, yeah, so first they watched the VHS, and then he goes, well, now that you told me that, I need to talk about my trauma. Right, right, so, right. So, you, Persephone, just shut up and listen to me. And then they were talking about his trauma when Hermes came over. Right. And now that he's done talking about his trauma, he's like, yeah, you know, go go take a bath. Yeah, go take go a bath shopping. or something. Go shopping. Go take a bath yeah. until I need to talk to you about my trauma. Yeah, again. hey, uh, vacuum cleaner in the closet right over there yeah, next, right. To the, next to the foyer. Mop, you know, make yourself useful. I, right? I'm feeling banana cake and pot roast for dinner this evening. Exactly. <laughs> so she goes, a bath, my king. Do I look like I want to be alone with my thoughts? Why and is she like, calling him her king? I don't know. This is, like, so random. She starts using titles all of a sudden. Yeah. But she never called him that before. No, I mean... And then, do I look like I want to be alone in my thoughts? There was... She looked fine. She, she looked, looked fine. She fine. was <laughs> giggling. Hee hee ha ha. Farting a dog. Made yeah. Made laugh, you know? She was laughing at the TV. Do I look like I want to be... More like... I She know. was going, do, do you want to com- uh, Do you want to confess to crimes that you've committed? Hee yeah. hee hee. It's like... Now, all of a sudden, uh, do I look like I want to be alone in my thoughts? She's such a parasite. She just wants to be stuck to him like a barnacle at Seriously? the office. So she says, I'll come with you. And he says, no. She's probably um, insecure about Minty getting him back. That's probably what it is. Because then her, her con would go south. The fact that she says yes after he says no is such a red flag. I know. She <laughs> sucks. That's so terrible. She just says yes. Yeah. That's a very convincing argument, he says. Why does she look like Coraline? Like, the, the the evil mother. The other mother. Yeah, the other mother in Coraline. And why is sarcasm an asterisk? Because Rachel's a bad writer. Oh, my God. Look, how am I supposed to rest with everything that's going on? I want to be useful. But she doesn't end up she being She doesn't useful. end up doing anything. No, because then they go back to his house and she takes a bath. Like yeah, he, like just he like he told her to. To begin with, so <laughs> I don't <sighs> understand. He says, you should be keeping a low profile. Wait, 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 wait. Did they copy-paste yes. those guys? <laughs> they copied and pasted them. And oh, my them. God! Switcheroo. So lazy! How lazy can you be? They they copied and pasted like at least the sketch, and then the line art was done very haphazardly. But uh, it's the same. It's the same thing. Ah! So he looks like a potato in this next one. Yeah, he's got like a freaking pear shaped head. Yeah, and his finger is so long. I know. Thick compared to his No, fingers. both of his both of his hands are two totally different sizes. Yeah. I've got an idea. He looks totally different in this next panel. And his, his arm just snaps. Like, it breaks. And that's what the snap yeah, is. Yeah, that's not what your hand looks like. Snap is like yeah, this. He's supposed to be going, like... But it's so uncomfortable to snap like nobody, that. Nobody like, puts their hands like this. It's so uncomfortable. Like, and she keeps doing this. Again, like, one year later, she never learns from her mistakes. It's like, I've got an idea. Like, very obvious. You go in front of a mirror, like I'm doing right now with the video camera. Record yourself doing that. You you draw a hand like this, and then you draw a hand like this, and then you draw a line between the two of them. It's not hard. <laughs> no, his, 
the snap. That's why, that's why I keep joking, like, does Rachel not have arms? <laughs> no. Because she sucks at drawing them. It's, it's because the snap is not his finger snapping, it's the bones it's in the his arm bones snapping. In his arm. As he goes, oh, God. <laughs> uh, so that's what that is. What's he looking at? I don't know. I don't even know where he is. Are they outside? <laughs> are they still outside? I know. I think they went inside. He says, go get ready. I'll be right back. Ready for- He's floating in the void. Yeah, where are they? <laughs> he didn't even move. He's just no, he didn't move. In the she, same spot. She, she, like, presumably off screen, like, floated up behind him because his eyes didn't change and his, there's no movement here. So, like, she just went from standing in front of him to, like, behind him all of a sudden. Yeah, and why'd he tell her to get ready? Because with his plan, she doesn't even end up needing to get ready. No, because he said, I mean, didn't he say, like, so he never said he was going to take her to the office. No. He just said, I've got an idea. Go get ready. I'll be right back. Ready Why didn't what? he just say, like, I'll take you to the office. Uh, I've got an idea. I'll take you to the office. Go get ready and I'll be right back. Yeah. Like, like change into something comfortable or something. Like, this is, <sighs> the writing is, like, seriously, like, you need a freaking, like, x-ray mind reader. It's very confusing writing. And to understand is, what's going yeah, on. Yeah, Persephone, are you ready? Go get ready. Well, are this is ready? another wasted panel. Let's yeah. just, like, zoom in. It's a joke panel. Get ready. What? Is this supposed to be funny? Yeah, because she's like, I'm, I'm already dressed. What do you mean, get ready? Oh. I would be confused, too, because I'd be like, what do you mean, get ready? Where are we going? What are you talking about? You never said where we're going. Yeah, like, are we getting food? Like, what do you mean, get ready? Do I have to put on makeup? Do you want me to disguise myself? You said I have to be low profile. What do you mean? Right? So she's rightfully confused because he just disappeared at the thing. Get ready. <sighs> yeah. And then again, he's in the same exact spot as he was earlier. I know. I don't even know where he is. It's not like he's next to, like, the front door coat rack. No. Next to, like, the umbrellas. Like, I don't know where he is. He's standing in the middle of nowhere like this, like, facing the side and looking back. Like, I don't know where you are, bro. Why is he holding his coat? Why is he doing this in the middle of nowhere? I don't know. I've got something to show you. And then she comes out of nowhere. We don't know where she's coming from. There's just a bunch of blocks behind her, which are presumably stairs, but they're too big. They're way too big. Yeah. And then she has, like, creepy, like, black hole eyes. Yeah. And this outfit is atrocious. Like, the colors, that's, I, I was telling Pyrrhic this off camera, but I was like, I don't know when the colors became this bad. Because the colors in this part of the comic are garish. They're so... Garish, and I don't remember them being this bad even a couple episodes ago. They look particularly bad in this batch of episodes, and they're close to like what we have today, oh where it's God. just like fluorescent highlighter green, like or fluorescent highlighter pink, this ugly freaking mossy green. It's like a desaturated. It's it's like like one of the biggest rules in color theory is that you don't pair a highly saturated color with a desaturated muddy color. It looks awful. It's like pairing, like, I don't know. It'd be like pairing, like, khaki and, like, highlighter yellow. Yeah. Like, Planet Fitness Purple with a really desaturated peach. Or, yeah, it would look terrible. You never do that. Like, it's, like, obvious color theory. And she used to be really good at color theory in early season one, and now it's just, like, I don't think season one Rachel would pair, pair these colors together. No. Never. Never they're, in a million they're years. They're horrible. No, the entire background is like a weird desaturated teal color, but the original color of the underworld was that nice, rich... It was like a rich, deep navy. Yeah, navy and cobalt with bits of teal here and there, some purple. It wasn't like this gray. No, it was like a combination of, of Zeus, Poseidon, and Hades colors mm -hmm. all together. And then her pink color was a really nice electric pink. It was more pink. like a rose pink. Yeah. It was like the color of a bright pink rose. Rather than, like, neon or highlighter. Like, here she looks like a member of Barney. Yeah. And this entire this illustration... This is more like magenta. Yeah, it, it's, 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 uh, it's like fuchsia. Yeah. It's bright fuchsia, like neon fuchsia. And this entire image is also slanted. Because yeah. Rachel never turns on the grid. Oh my god. It's in the top. It's in the top bar. There's a toolbar. And I, I think it says view. There's, like, a little tab that says view. And if you click on view, there's a little thing that says grid. Yeah. It's G-R-I-D. And a grid is a bunch of squares and lines yeah. that make it so that you can tell whether your image is straight or slanted. No. If Rachel ever watches these videos, we're giving her, like, really good buku advice. 
you know yeah. it's not only is it slanted but like on the phone this drives me nuts like the the space on the sides of the panel they're is not, not equal. equal they're not equal that drives me nuts it drives me nuts too it's so... especially um later on when she starts having like and this art has already happened but in in this batch of um chapters there's a, a chapter where all of the panels have like assets like an artifact up and down both sides of the oh, ribbon. Did you know. notice that? Oh, which chapter was it's that? It's the one where um, Hera comes over. No, no, I didn't notice that. Cause it I was, was really obvious I on was, the desktop. Yeah, I was blitzing through those panels because I was so enraged with like how how little effort went in. It, like that's when I was getting to like she's not even facing the right side of the screen in this for turning around. She turned around for no reason. <laughs> yeah, so and she turned her back on her. Yeah, and uh, just in terms of like. It, remarking on the fashion here, um, this is like a 1940s inspired outfit, so I'm guessing she was like Rachel's probably watching his Girl Friday or something at this point because yeah. it looks like it, identical to an outfit from that movie with Cary Grant. Um, but it doesn't match what Persephone's worn at any point in this comic ever before. I thought she liked wearing easy, comfortable clothes. Yeah. Whenever she was alone by herself, she always wore like loose t shirts and short shorts or like tank tops and short shorts. So why is she wearing this 1940s outfit? And her body totally changed because the the kind of proportions she's had in previous chapters and also in other chapters, basically when she's outside of this dress, is she looks a lot less um, svelte, right? A lot less thin. She looks quite thin here. No, because in, if you were if you had like the insta thought proportion with the Kim Kardashian giant F cup boobs and giant size fourteen butt on a five foot two frame, that doesn't look good in nineteen forties clothes. No, like. The 1940s silhouette, it's like 1980s clothes. Like, I don't look good in 1980s clothes because I have, like, like bigger muscles and I'm shorter mm -hmm. and, like, stouter than the 1980s ideal silhouette. Every decade has an ideal silhouette. The ideal yeah. silhouette of the 1940s is tall. It's it's very similar to the 1980s, actually. It's, it's tall with broad shoulders, a narrow waist, and narrow hips. Yeah. With long legs. See, like, her hips are narrower than her shoulders in this outfit. Yeah, because if she had really wide hips and a peplum... And she's, like, short torso. Because Persephone has a very short torso in, like, every other panel. If you have a short torso and you wear a peplum and you have white hips, you just look like a cupcake. Yeah. Like, you look yeah. really round and rotund and disproportionate. And it just doesn't flatter that It doesn't that flatter type that figure. type of figure at all. Here, she looks like she's, like, 5'8". Yeah. 5'8 and 140 tall. pounds. Yeah. Whereas in other panels, like, in that... Uh, no, in the pink princess dress, she also drew her really tall. Yeah. Um, but in other panels, she looks like she's about five feet tall and, like, 140 pounds. Yeah. You know, but in this one, magically, she looks like a Barbie doll. Yeah. So Hades just owes, and then he says, now you can move about freely and remain unseen if you wish. What happened to his arm? Holy crap, dog. The dog, why is the dog there? For what purpose? The oh. dog? Nobody even interacts with the The longer dog. you look at this panel, I know, look at his torso... His torso compared to his legs. Nobody mapped this out. It's really bad. It's a really ex excruciatingly bad panel. Why not just say this is an invisibility cloak? Because what he's saying is word salad. No, the, that's what I'm saying. Like, everyone talks around the point. Everyone talks around what they're trying to say. He should just be like, here, it's an invisibility cloak. Wear this and, and nobody will even see you when we go out together. So, like, why does he have to say, now you can move about freely and remain unseen if you wish? Like, move around freely. Move around freely. But she already moves around freely. Remain unseen if you wish. So, what? So, no, he's saying if you wish. So he, he's not telling her to wear the cloak. But he is telling her to wear the cloak. She has to wear the cloak because she's wanted for arrest. So what do you mean if like, you wish? Like, she's a wanted woman. What do you mean if you wish? Oh like, um, no, but in this context, you can move about freely. Like, that makes it sound like if she doesn't wear this, she's got, like, leg irons on. <laughs> Manacles! <laughs> like, it, like, it sounds like you say you can physically move about freely because you don't have to wear a corset or something. But it's like, here's an invisibility cloak. Now the police, the gendarme, won't see you walking down the streets of the underworld and arrest you. Oh, my God. This but even crazy. then, there's no police. So, like, what is he talking about? Please. <laughs> Remain unseen if you wish. 
Oh is it a Schrodinger's cloak? Is it only when you put it on and wish to remain unseen that you can become invisible? And he doesn't even say see, and then he puts it on. He just puts it on, and I had no idea what was happening. No, in uh, again, unless you're reading her mind, you're like, what the F is going on, bro? And then he just starts, like, no-clipping, and, yeah. like, her face is weird and staring into the middle of, like, she looks like she just had dull surprise. Oh my gosh. And that's like supposed to be his like cheek and jaw yeah, over there. Yeah. That is so strange. And she says, Where did you go? But she's not looking at him. She's looking off to the she's side. She's looking she's looking past the panel and saying, Where did you go? Because Hades never explained that it's a freaking invisibility <laughs> cloak. No. He just said, Now you can move around freely and be unseen, remain unseen if you wish. Oh and the, the I guess that's why the dog was there to make that face, that Tamagotchi <laughs> face. I'm like pulling out a gun. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's like that it's a gun. And saying, <laughs> now I can be free and not have to think anymore if I wish. Pow! <laughs> and then dying in Hades. <laughs> you never explained what it does. Or what it even is. Or what it even is. You just put it on. It just looks like a blanket when he has it. And are we going too deep? I feel like I'm going insane. I feel like the freaking worms have entered my brain. No, just compare that to the scene with the invisibility cloak in Harry Potter. They say, this is an invisibility cloak. Yeah. And then Harry goes, an invisibility cloak. And then he puts it on. And then he puts it on and he goes, whoa. Yeah. But they name it. They don't just go, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> well, what happened to you? Why are you just a floating head? Takes it off. It's an invisibility cloak. It's so, like, ah, it's so poorly written. It's the cloak of invisibility. It was given to me as a gift when the war ended. <laughs> look at his face. No, look at both of their faces. No, but her face looks especially. She's not even looking at him. Cool, Hades. <laughs> <laughs> like, he looks so weird in that panel, His too. ear, oh my god. And his nose, man. No, but his ear. It's so huge. It's like a dinner plate. It looks like the, the weird ears with the really bad wigs in Rings of Power, where, like, this entire, yeah. like, sideburn area is just gone. Yeah, his, no, but, uh, yes, but also his ear doesn't even sit flat to his head. Yeah. It, like, flaps out like freaking car mirrors. <laughs> like, they all look like furries. And she says, I thought it was just made up, but we've never seen this established before, We've ever. never even heard this myth before, no. ever. And Persephone, for some reason, is always doing the hip hip hooray and flying now. Yeah. I don't know why. Is it because there's, like, a foot fetish thing going on so that she can keep drawing her feet? Her feet are so tiny. Yeah, like, it, it comes off like she just really wants to draw her feet all the time. This is like a pin-up pose, anyway. Yeah, you know? it is. It's, it's very strange. It's a very unnatural way to pose. It is. That's what I'm saying. Like, it looks like a fetishy thing. Like, she has her flying all the time so she can keep drawing her feet. It's strange. I can't. I can't. Theorize. You can't wrap your mind around I it. can't theorize about what's going on here. So... He says, I pretended that it had gone missing because I got sick of Zeus trying to borrow it. She says, gotcha. Why are we wasting time talking well, about But she looks story? terrified here, too. Because the implication is Zeus was trying to borrow it so he could rape <laughs> women or, like, watch women, like, undress. He says, if I had known you were going to lend me a cloak of invisibility, I wouldn't have changed into this very inconspicuous this outfit. This is such a waste of time. It's this not... is, like, half the chapter on this stupid crap that's not funny. Does the cloak ever come back? No. Is it ever, like, used in some no. later plot? No. So why are you spending so much time it's, setting it's it up? It's like what we said earlier. She's having the one e single episode Attack on Titan gear. Yeah. She probably watched something recently. We know she watched, like, His Girl Friday or some other 1940s movie. Yeah. So she decided to dress Persephone in that outfit. And then she also watched something else with an invisibility cloak and went, Oh, yeah, Hades also has an invisibility cloak and decided to throw it in. He says, yeah, nothing says incognito like a peplum. Why is he such a judgmental prick? That sounds like something Eros would say. I know. It's so out of character for Hades. Yeah, but it also sounds judgmental. Yeah. Like, when she came downstairs, he was like, ooh, and now <laughs> he's like, yeah, nothing says incognito like a peplum. Huh, peasant. Yeah. He's, he's negging her. Yeah, he's negging her. So then they're in the car with coffees. And then we have this weird sequence where it's like, Rachel really wanted to draw them being domestic, so she had... Persephone giving him his coffee. Why is he making that face? 
she thinks it's funny and quirky and, and charming and cute, and it's not. And then he starts getting into the fetish <laughs> stuff. I, I like. Is it really? Is it just me, or is it that every single thing that comes up in this episode specifically feels like it was written days apart? And it's completely unconnected. Yeah. Like, this episode starts with them confronting Hermes. Yeah. And if you went from there, like, from the last episode, you wouldn't know what was going to happen next. Because everything that happens in this episode is effing random and comes out of nowhere and then goes nowhere. Nowhere. It's weird. It's so bizarre. It's like she drew it all out and then filled in all the dialogue later. I don't even think it's she did that. So I think she drew, she drew, like, the Hermes confrontation one day. She drew the bit with the invisibility cloak the next day. She drew this car scene and then getting to the, the office a third day. She drew the Thanatos and Minty scenes the fourth day, and then the rest was rushed. That's what I think happened. Because, like, there's so many non sequiturs and tangents and, like, random crap happening that has nothing to do with anything. Yeah, so he's asking her, how many times have you gotten really big? And she says, just that one time. But again, what they're talking about and their expressions are so at odds with each other... It's, she looks like she's having a disturbing flashback in it's this It's so eerie. And she's staring right at the camera, too. She, yeah, no, it's like she, just that one time she's threatening the reader. <laughs> <laughs> it's really creepy. Yeah, and then... What's wrong with his mouth? I don't know, it's like getting spaghettified by a black hole. He says, do you think you could do it again? Why is he asking that? I thought when she said this, he was like... Like, hinting at, like, a water fetish. Yeah, like some kind of psychic. It's, it's really right? stupid because it's like, he just explained that he has trauma from being eaten by his father when he was a child. Yeah. So it's like, the only place my mind went to was after that episode going like, hey, I want to relive that part of my childhood. Do you think you could do that for me, Persephone? No, because it's, str it's strange because when he initially read that in the report, he didn't believe that that actually happened, first of all. Second of all, Zeus says later... Uh, that act of wrath, the thing she was purportedly said to have done during those acts of wrath, like, growing that tall, nobody's ever seen that before, and nobody knows what that means in terms of powers of gods and Olympus. So it's, like, an important thing. Or it's, it's like, like a titan power. Yeah, it's like a, it's like a strange power that is uncommon. And so instead of saying, like, like, this reaction is so out of place, not only to Hades' previous reaction to being skeptical, but also to Zeus's later reaction of saying, that's so odd, I've never seen anything like that before, I wonder what it means for Olympus as a whole, that it's like, why is this in the comic? What's the point of saying this? What's the point of bringing it up? Why did you write it like this? The way it's written, he's, it sounds like he's really interested, but he's trying to keep a low profile or keep it casual, which sounds like he's trying to talk about, like, a sex thing. Yeah. Like, it sounds like he... It's not like he said, like, by the way, I read that report, and it you never disputed that in your version of the Act of Wrath, that you grew really big. Um, you know, do you think you... Like, how much control... You said you don't have control over your powers. Um, you know, I've never heard of that happening before. Yeah. I've been around for 2,000 years. I know a lot of gods. I've never heard of that happening before. So that's really strange. Yeah. Um, or even say, like, the Titans before us, who we defeated... Are the only ones big. who are known to yeah. have had that power. Helios is the only guy who's still around, yeah. who's still that size. So I'm wondering if you or Demeter knew that you could do that. Like, instead of saying, do you think you could do that again, or how many times you've done that, he says, did you know that you were capable of doing that? What else are you capable of that or, you don't know yet? Or what did it feel like? Because I've, like... I've been around 2,000 years, I'd like to think that I know all my powers, but I've never felt anything close to that, and, like, I've never come close to becoming, like, 50 feet tall or whatever. I don't think I could change my own size at will. Yeah. You know, like, just something to bring up the fact that it's an unusual power that the Titans have had, so nobody's ever heard of it, and he's interested in investigating it further, instead of this weird roundabout way of discussing it, which just comes off, like, strange. It's like, so It's very weird. strange. It's a strange way to broach the subject. It's a strange thing to talk about, and I can't for the life of me, understand why he's even asking about it. No, because it's like, it doesn't lead to any further plot point later, no. where he's like, we need you to grow really big so that you can reach down, and she doesn't, like, she grows big when she fights Kronos later, mm -hmm. right? But uh, it's not the same, she doesn't look anything like she did during the Act of Wrath, so I don't even understand why it's being brought up like this. And so she says, I don't know, I haven't felt that way since the day everything happened. You didn't even feel that way when Apollo assaulted you. Really? Really? 
Yeah. Not when Apollo assaulted her, not when she had to go to the OBGYN. Not when she had to, like, confront Apollo again, and she said, I'm so angry, but only snapped one string on his lyre. Yeah, I mean, the only time she used her powers against Apollo is when she stole the lyre with her branches, or her vines. Yeah. She didn't use and her And she powers. never directly used her powers against him, ever. No. So she never lost, con- like, it's interesting how she lost control in the mortal realm, but it, ever since she came to Olympi- or Olympus in the underworld, she never lost control once, even though she got freaking assaulted. It's almost like the fact that she lost control and committed genocide was never planned from the beginning. Because it wasn't. <laughs> it totally wasn't. So then she says, like, sometimes I feel flickers of it, but she looks bored in this yeah, panel. Yeah, she looks like she doesn't want to talk about it. Yeah, like, she, she looks like she's watching somebody give a lecture on, like, hemorrhoids or something. Just bored. <laughs> Just trust me, I could have used a giant version of myself a few times recently. Not, uh, talking about that further. Hades still never says, why was Apollo at your house? No. Uh, what's going Hades, on? Hades, you know, Hades never mentions, um, he never asks her why she ran away. No. Like you were saying, uh, I don't know if we mentioned this in the last video or off camera, but you were saying that, like, Actually, we didn't mention this in the last video because I was thinking of, we were talking about it off camera extensively. The fact that the act of wrath, uh, the Apollo blackmail pictures, and the um, running away are all conflated as a single plot point when they're not at all. Persephone ran away because Apollo, she ran to Apollo and Apollo blackmailed her. Mm -hmm. That has nothing to do with the act of wrath, because he did not blackmail her with the act of wrath. No. He blackmailed her with pictures from when he assaulted her. So, she ran away a day before the arrest warrant came out, coincidentally, not knowing, supposedly, that the arrest warrant was going to come out later that day. She ran away, and after she ran away, she didn't call or text anyone, even though there was no reason for her not to. Yeah. I mean, she was in a motel room. Every single motel that I've been to has a phone yeah. in it. And she, her, part of her plan to become independent hinged on her keeping her job at the Underworld um, and making, continuing to make money so she could support herself and not have to live with Artemis, where Apollo came a lot. Um, so she would never have to see him again. So that being the case, why would she not call into her job and call in sick? Unless she somehow knew that this arrest warrant was going to be handed out later that day and that if she disappeared by not calling in, she would be alerting Hades that uh, as to her disappearance Hades right. would be worried about her knowing that she is a r- responsible person who would never not call in sick yeah so sh- by that point it seems like you know going with our alternate theory of her being a schemer it seems like she had already figured out a way to alert Hades of her disappearance even if Artemis never went to him yeah because she never called in sick because that that episode there was an episode where Minthy was throwing her stuff away because saying that she never showed up to work yeah on Friday yeah so she was supposed to show up to work on Friday. So, um, but going back to the original point, Ra- the way Rachel wrote it, she writes it as if we're supposed to believe that Persephone ran away because of the act of wrath. Yeah. Because she's not thinking about Apollo's pictures. No. She hasn't thought about Apollo's pictures since episode 114 or whatever. Even when she ran away in the POV flashback episode... She wasn't thinking about Apollo. She was thinking about apartments. She was thinking about apartments. Yeah. I mean, the episode opened with the half, the music notes and all that stuff and her running away. But the end of the episode focuses much more on the act of wrath than it does on Apollo. Yeah. She, when she gets to the motel, she's acting like everything's hunky-dory. Yeah. So, I like, it's, it's really bizarre to me that it's like there's at least two plot lines going on right now that are constantly being conflated and then Hera shows up later after the Zoom call and it's yeah. further conflated. Yeah. The Zoom call is regarding the act of wrath. So why did Hera show up after that to go tell Persephone about the vision that she had of Apollo? Yeah. She could have told her about that at any point after getting the vision. Yeah. She could have told her that when she came to our house last Friday. She gets the vision in episode 31. I know, and it's been over 100 episodes. And she doesn't even tell uh, Demeter or Artemis or Eros when they're looking for Persephone that she had that no, vision. No, that's what I'm saying. And she thinks Persephone might be in serious danger. She doesn't do anything with it, really. So it's like, and it's going back to the idea of like everything being swept under the rug and the fact that it's like, I, I don't even think Rachel realizes that there's at least two plot lines going on here that are not related. You yeah. haven't drawn a straight line between Apollo's assault and the act of wrath. 
And we were talking about how we would um, improve this in a rewrite, and we were saying it would have been so much better if, because Apollo keeps showing up and keeps having the same repetitive conversation, go out with me, no, go out with me, no. That yeah. happens at least twice. Yeah. Um, you could have had one confrontation where he says, go out with me. And then she said, dude, you raped me. Why would I want to go anywhere with you? Yeah. And then he could blackmail her after that. Yeah. If you don't go out with me, if you don't be my girl, um, I'll show everyone these pictures and show what a liar you are. Yeah. And then she could... Go, after that conversation, she just says, F that, goes to the TGOEM, and withdraws her membership because she says, I have a job with the underworld now. Because when she's at the motel, she says, my job should be enough to pay for it, yeah. even if I get rid of the scholarship. Yeah. So there's no reason that that plot line hasn't been cut off yet. No. There's no reason why she should still be with the TGOEM. No. She should have just cut off her membership and moved out of Artemis's house right then and there. Yeah. And then Apollo tracks her down again, or like starts stalking her or something, and then he gets like a huge vendetta against her. And he's the one who goes out of his way to go to Helios to dig up dirt on her. Yeah. And he's the one who gives that information to Thanatos. Instead of bringing Thanatos with him, he drops little hints that gets Thanatos to investigate it himself. So Apollo should be the one who has a grudge against her and finds out all the information about the Act of Wrath. And then the second time Apollo confronts her, he should blackmail her again. She should be like, ha, idiot. I've already freaking withdrawn from the TGOEM. You have no hold over me. I'm making enough enough money from my job with the Underworld Corp that I don't have to worry about a scholarship. Yeah. And I live on my own now, so you're never going to see me at Artemis's again. Mm -hmm. You know, just leave me alone. And then he comes out with the big guns of yeah. the Act of Wrath. Exactly. And then after that, that's when she says, I can't show my face at the Underworld Corp again if they learn of this information, and I don't want to go home to the mortal realm. So I'm going to go run away and do my own thing and get a different job, you know? Yeah. Something like that. Like, have her go into disguise as a nymph because she's a friggin' criminal. Exactly. That but that would have drawn a straight line between Apollo and the Act of Wrath because right now, when Apollo... Sh not Apollo. um, Yeah, when Apollo showed up to Hera's office and when he was talking to Zeus and telling him to go see Helios, she was trying to say, like, oh, Apollo's behind all of this, but he wasn't. No. It was Thanatos and Minthi. Yeah. And Apollo showing her the pictures has nothing to do with the act of wrath. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. And so when he's talking about it with Daphne later, it's just like, what, what, what's going on here? He didn't even care. Like, when Zeus told him about it, he just went, teeth suck. That's it. He didn't even care. He no. wasn't like, oh, she's getting exactly what she deserves. Nothing. No reaction. It's just really, it's it's so o all over the place, the writing is. It's like every single episode, new stuff is introduced, and nothing is connected. So I'm just floating in the void along with all these characters. Yeah. Then Haiti says, very inconvenient. She says, yup. And you see the dogs. Well, there's only two dogs. Yeah. And he had, like, ten in the beginning. So, yeah. So were, were those dogs just disappeared? He just dropped them off to daycare and never picked them up? No. Is that canon now? <laughs> Yeah. Two weeks later, he just never picked him up from daycare. And also, I feel like in early Lower Olympus, we would have seen uh, the the car smaller and then the skyline as they're driving through the yeah, city. Yeah, we would have seen the skyline as they're driving through the city. We would have seen, like, a trail, a light trail coming from the car. As Here, far, we don't even see the seats. Yeah, as far as we're concerned, this they're still in his driveway. They haven't yeah. even left yeah. his driveway because there's a, there's a fog everywhere, that, that same teal blue fog. Yeah. And so... Oh, oh boy. Yeah, Thanatos. Today is definitely the day. His hair is so... His hair looks totally model. different. He looks like Hades. Yeah, he looks like Hades. So he's sweating. And this is at the office. And I don't know where it is in the office. It's like some room of requirement with drinks in the back. And like yeah. a chase lounge. I don't know where this is. Yeah, there's books. There's like a bookshelf. There's books on the floor. There's a chase lounge. There's books at the base of the chase lounge. And then there's like alcohol. And she's looking out the window, and she goes, Hades is going to get here. See how luminous I am. Realize he's made a terrible decision. She has off-model hair, too. Yeah, and we'll be back together just like that. Um, but timeline-wise, uh, she and Hades broke up on only... Monday. E yeah, Monday or Tuesday. Monday or Tuesday. I think it was Monday. Yeah. No, no, it was Tuesday. It was Tuesday night. So Tuesday night. Here it is Saturday midday, like mid-morning. So that's been... Less than a week. Wednesday, Thursday, <laughs> Friday, Saturday. So it's been five days. And this is her plan to get him back. And why... Why did she even break up with him then? No, she's so fixated on getting him back all of a sudden. Yeah. It's bizarre. She didn't really care that uh, they had missed dinner. She didn't really care that everything went wrong. She didn't really care that he had moved on to Persephone. 
And now she's, like, cartoonishly obsessed with getting back. Yeah, like a Saturday morning villain. But the thing is, when he broke up with her, she didn't, like... She didn't, like, say, no, I don't want to break up. She said, you'll be back. Yeah. Once you real, once she realizes that you're not the guy you claim to be, you'll yeah. be back. Yeah, and so... So she- instead of sabotaging Persephone and making Persephone look bad in front of Hades, shouldn't she be sabotaging Hades in front of Persephone? Yeah, and... If that's what she thinks, like, she thinks that he's, like... She thinks that Persephone is too good for him, and she'll run away the second she sees how he truly is. Yeah, so this is like a Thetis to get Zeus back kind of plan. Yeah. It's not really a Minthy to get Hades back kind of plan. In fact, there's even that exchange where she said, did you try going into the office without a bra? Yeah. And Minthy didn't even respond to that because that's not her kind of tactics. No, it was always implied that Minthy is less shallow and materialistic than Thetis is. Yeah. So then, in response to that, Thanatos says, what if Hermes is right? And he's talking about whether or not Hades actually cares about the act of wrath. Mm-hmm. And then she says, he isn't. And he says, but what if he isn't right? Him being right isn't possible. Yes, it is. <laughs> because if he was right, we would be effed, and I simply won't let that happen. Again, that doesn't make any sense with regard to Hermes being right about her being his flavor. Because nothing happens to these characters. Yeah, not only so. that, uh, she says... Like, basically, I won't even entertain the idea that he's right, because if he is right, then we're screwed. Yeah. But it's like, shouldn't you be thinking about that so that you can find out a contingency plan so that you're not screwed? But, like, even beyond all that, it it goes back to the original question, how are they screwed if they're wrong? Like, all they did was raise awareness to something that Persephone, like, definitely did. It's not like when she told her version of the act of wrath, it was, like, completely different. She did do those things. She just came up with a big cockamamie story to make herself look better for doing those things. But she 100% did them. She owned up to it. She did all the things that she was accused of. Yeah. So how would they be punished in any way? Do they get punished for that at all? I don't think so. I don't know why they would be punished. (laughs) It's really... It's really stupid. It's really stupid. Why even bring it up if there's no punishment in mind and, like... No character can even articulate what it would mean for them to be wrong, because how do you, how are you wrong about telling the truth? Yeah, it's the truth. It's not like they're lying. It's not like it's a conspiracy. No. And so then she says, oh, he's coming. You can't be here. So she shoves him out. And that's, that's Hades really tiny in that panel right there behind her. Oh my god, is it? It's like, I spy. There he is at the bottom of the office coming in. Is the floor glass or something? How can you see him? I don't know. It's what? so confusing. I don't understand. It's the House of Leaves that, alien architecture that's house. Like, that's like a floor right there where the stairs are. Mm-hmm. So how can you see him? No idea. No idea how it's even possible. And Thanatos is just like completely like disassociated. He, yeah, there. he looks like an automaton. Like he looks so robotic. And his little... Blank. His wings are starting to sprout. No, those no, are that's her wings. sleeves. Yeah, those are her sleeves, but they're the exact same color as his wings, so that when you see him in the next panel, she just shoves him out the window, I guess. Yeah, but like, again, you can't open the windows in, in a skyscraper. No. So she just shoves him out of the building, and then Hades comes up the stairs. And that's Persephone holding on to him secretly. Oh yeah, her, her hand. Yeah, there's a little pink aura there, and so then Minthy says, Hades... And he goes, um, Minty. <clears throat> so she's in the middle of, like, the corporate landing. This is the freaking corporate building. She's in the middle of the lobby. Yeah. Wearing a freaking trench coat. How'd she even know that he'd show up on a Saturday? It's not like he, he's called her and said, hey, can you be at the office to no. give me this report? No. It's not like this is his, 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 like, personal, this isn't his personal office. No. I don't know where they are. And her hair is so long in this panel. Yeah, and I, I don't know where they are. I don't know what she's doing there. I don't know how she knew he would get there. She could have been waiting all day for him to get there, and he never decided She could have waited, yeah. I mean, she could have waited all day because she was there on Friday, and he was looking for Persephone around the pawn shops. And why is her arm so unreasonably tiny? One of them. Yeah. The other one isn't. It's like... It's one of them is a stick, and the other one is normal. It's strange. And then her hands are doing this. Yeah. She's not putting her hands on her waist. Her hands are doing this. Yeah, there's something. It's, it's some piece of media where it's like there's this stuffy guy. It's like a period show or something. He keeps like going like this to himself. Do what? You, no. Do you remember? It might be from like that that John Adams show. With like Bobby a meme? Lottie. No, it's not a meme. It's like I saw it and I was I saw it while somebody else was watching it and we were both like, well, what's he doing with his hands? Why does he keep doing this? He was like, oh, <laughs> yes, quite, quite. You know, it's just <laughs> awkward. Even he's like, this is awkward. Why are you doing that, right? And so... 
Yeah, he came out of concern. <laughs> yeah, he's like, are you okay? Yeah. <laughs> so strange. And then even Hades is like, oh, why are you standing like that? Yeah. <laughs> why are you standing like that in the middle of the freaking, uh, like, lobby? Yeah. And so then he says, what can I do for you? Oh, I saw the news about Persephone. You must be furious. She looks so different. It doesn't even look like Olympia. Yeah, and I guess Persephone's not holding onto his arm anymore. I thought you might like some company. Oh, so awkward. It's so awkward. And they, her, it's, her body's completely off model here. Yeah, too. and it's a complete, like... It looks like it was traced. It, it looks odd, but it's, like, so out of character. It's so weird. Not even saying, hey, like, come into the coffee room or something. It's in the middle of the lobby. She just starts undressing in the middle of the lobby where anybody could walk in. He it's says he's crazy. got thousands of employees. Let's just put this coat back on. It was purely designed to make Minty look it embarrassing. Was, yeah, it was purely designed to assassinate her character even more and humiliate her. Yeah. Because the author hates Minty. Like, here's a character who went from slapping Hades to now undressing in public and just embarrassing herself. Yeah, without even knowing, like, waiting all day for him to show up, without even knowing if he would, just so that she could, like, undress in public. So weird. She could have texted him at the very I least. Know. So then he ties her back up and he goes, I can assure you, I'm fine. But I am busy, so if you could excuse yourself and also never do that again, that would be preferable. She says, preferable? Are you kidding me? She looks so bad. I know, she looks really off model here. Panel. Oh my god. It looks really weird. She doesn't even look angry. She no. Just looks weird. It looks like it looks like, you know, those Japanese wood prints. That's yeah. what she looks like in this panel. Yeah. And he says, Minty, if it's too much of a struggle for you to continue working in this role, basically, like, threatening to fire her. Well, not only that, this is, like, the third copy-paste of the same face. Yeah. And she says, are you really turning me down? This is ridiculous. She committed treason against you, and you're still up her butt. Like, if you wanted to seduce him, there was a better, more tactful, less rushed, weird, out-of-character way you to do You know what she could have done? He could have showed up to the office on her Saturday, and then she could have, like, you know, um... She could have her work computer open and, and have her work computer monitoring when he's in the office. And then she could see him online and she could be like, oh, he never goes online from home. He's in the office. And then she rushes and she was like in the middle of like a lunch date with Thanatos or something. And then she's like, oh, Hades is in the office. And she's like, how do you know? And she's like, oh, he's online. I can see it on my mobile phone, you know? Yeah. And then she's like, I'm going to go into the office. And he's like, you're really r dropping everything on a Saturday to go in. Uh, to impress your workaholic boss, like, trying to get him back. Like, what's wrong with you, you know? Yeah. And then she could show up to the office and, like, oh, do you need your, your dry cleaning done? Hey, Hades, I brought you some food from your favorite place around the corner. Yeah. Here's a coffee. Like, you must be really stressed with everything that's going on with Persephone. Like, basically just being understanding and nice. Yeah. And then she could try the old, like, lean in for a kiss thing, and then he could be like, no, yeah. I don't want to do this anymore. We're broken up, remember? Like, yeah. if this is too difficult for you to, like, handle, then I can have you move to a different place in the company. Yeah, and he could say, look, it's only been five days. Yeah. And she gets really ticked off, and then she leaves. Because yeah. this exchange goes nowhere. It has nothing to do with well, not anything. not only that, who, like, just freaking, like, drops their clothes in public for their freaking ex? Like, it's so weird. Nobody does <laughs> yeah. this. Nobody so does, hard. nobody acts like this. Like, nobody who's, like, a freaking reasonable person, normal person, acts like this. No. This is so weird. It's so cartoonish. Like, it's so, like... I don't live life in real life. I live life by watching movies, TVs, and soap operas. Yeah. That's what this is written like. Yeah. And his reaction is very, like, underwhelming, too. I know. It's like it didn't even happen. And so then he goes, let me get this straight. First, Persephone's too perfect for me, but now she's too wrathful for me. Which is it? Oh, my God. What, when did they... What zoom-in is this? Because it's so low-poly. Why didn't you just get this one and then flip it? I don't understand. I don't understand why it's so low poly. Yeah. It's it's weird. It looks like it was drawn by it like it's not even the same color scheme as Hades and It looks like just like a backup stock Hades yeah. that they keep on hand for <laughs> like, when they need to do a quick panel. <laughs> like, and then they just slap it in there. I wonder if the they background. do that because like this looks like it's from a different episode. Yeah. Okay, back to stupid Minty. But, I mean, her being wrathful doesn't have anything to do with what Minty's saying. She's saying she committed treason against you, not that she's wrathful. Seriously. She could commit treason against you without committing an act of wrath. She didn't say she leveled an entire village of mortals in her act of wrath. 
I mean, he's not even responding to what she's saying. No. It's like Hades has really bad comprehension No, skills. first, like, like Hades, Hades' argument makes no sense because when she said she was too good for him, that was before the reveal of the act of wrath. Oh, so all... they drew this panel first and then they just reused it there. I know, I realized that. Oh. <laughs> but why not just grab one from the earlier? Like, you already had a bunch of panels where he was drawn looking decent. I know. No, but all he ha- all she has to do to counter his statement is, yeah, she was too good for you, and then we found out that she's a psychopathic genocidal maniac who hid it from everyone, yeah. and she's a wanted criminal. I think that changes things, don't you, you yeah. know? Like, all you have to do is to say that. Like, it's a very quick response. Like, yeah, Hades, that was before we found out that she was an international criminal. What's your point? Well, not only that, but she says, um... Well, now I'm seeing you for who you really are. Because I didn't think you'd be the type of person to think that kind of behavior is acceptable. You just proved me right. Minty? Yeah. Yeah, no, she could say, like... You proved me right. No, she could say, like, all those times where you had such high standards for me. What I could wear to your your family's parties. Yeah. What I had to do to prepare for the future Queen of the Underworld role. Uh, all of the times that you got on me for my low low upbringing or whatever, or yeah. Hera got on me for my low upbringing, now I see that that doesn't even really matter to you as long as the first, like, pink boobage walks past you, you know? Yeah, not, not, and in addition to that, she would say, like, you were so afraid of people thinking that you reeked of death and that you were like your father, but uh, Little Miss Perfect is just like you. Mm-hmm. She's just like the version of you that you hate. Yeah. That you wanted everybody to forget about. Right. She's just like Kronos. Yeah. Right? And you guys are perfect for each other, so I was right. Yeah. And then he, he like, he doesn't even care about that anymore. No. It's, like, not, not top of mind at all. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, his, the way he treated Minty and the way that he was getting on her for dressing to Hebe's birthday party, it's like he doesn't have any of the same compunctions when it comes to Persephone literally committing genocide and committing an act of, like, a criminal act against the three realms. No. And then lying about it all. Yeah. So he's a total hypocrite. He's a total hypocrite, and he has no <clears throat> consistency, so... He says, maybe she's both. Wouldn't that be interesting? And then his arm breaks again. Yeah. I have no idea what's going on with his arm. What does arm. that mean? Yeah, he's like standing in profile <clears throat> and he's going like this. But that's not... He's, he's It's so awkward. That's not how arms work. Why not just get his arm that's closest to the camera to do this? Yeah. Or show him turning like this. And Thanatos watched the whole thing. Thanatos saw her humiliation. Yeah. Then he says, oh no, and then you see the glittery swivel chair. No, 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 and she's there with her red eyes. Why does she have red eyes? I don't know, but it's the same background as before, just blurred. And Thanatos says, Hermes was right, she is his flavor. But not even because, uh, basically, the being his flavor thing had to do with whether or not she intended to kill all those mortals. And she didn't intend to kill all those mortals. That was her story. Yeah, Her story was that she didn't intend to. Yeah, and so now both of them have red eyes, mm-hmm. and neither of them notice Thanatos standing right there, and he says we're in deep crap, but does anything of consequence happen to them? No. Because it didn't up until episode 140. Nothing of consequence happened to any of them. No. Thetis wasn't even in any of the episodes, so like, what is he talking about? No. <laughs> <laughs> no! <laughs> Alright, we're done. What a friggin' toxic poop fire. Why is it called muted? Oh, because they were on Zoom? Yeah. Oh, the Zoom call! The Zoom call is so horrible. So if you're watching the video, eyes on the screen, at this point you will have noticed a dramatic uh, change in the quality. It's like, it's like we're sitting right in front of you wherever you're watching this video, whether that's on your phone or your laptop. You can almost reach out. <laughs> touch us (laughs) yes so we had like a little bit of a equipment change here and we also took a break between um our discussion that we're filming this today and then the episode that we finished last time which took like two hours to talk about it it took two hours to film and we talked for almost two hours yeah so uh now it's a week later as you can tell uh my hair has grown i was talking about cutting it (laughs) for continuity but it doesn't matter because it's not continuous anyway so um yeah so it's funny in fact if i had cut it it probably would have grown out i know about the same length that it had been in the previous thing but yeah we decided to take a quick break and now we're back so that's it that's all you want to say Oh, what do you, what do you, clearly you want to say something else. What do you want to say? Oh, I was just going to say that um, Laura Olympus is kind of chapping our butts, and we took a break and then decided to pivot to Let's Play for a bit. Yeah. Um, cover different material, kind of get like a little R&R, 
filmed a bunch of other videos and now we're back yep. to Laura Olympus. Yeah, so at the time that we post this Lore Olympus video, we might have a Pirates of the Caribbean video out where we just talk about the script and how it's a really great example mm -hmm. of good writing. And then we would have already posted our Let's Play video mm -hmm. and, um, I don't know, maybe maybe the Avatar video? Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. What about the video about uh, multiverse theory and heat death of the universe? <laughs> this is the meaning of life. <laughs> yeah, the video about the meaning of life interpreting Jackson Pollock. What about that video? <laughs> oh, I think we filmed that after we filmed the Snail Lords video. Oh yeah, the Snail Lords video, and then we also did a video about um, Everything is Fine, Carnaby mm -hmm. Kim, we covered uh, Chainsaw, Chainsaw Man. Man. <laughs> We've done all of it. <laughs> That's a lie, we didn't do any of that. So. <laughs> okay, so now we're back. Yeah. Uh, same couch, same people, different camera, same outfit, <laughs> yeah. same floor Olympics. <laughs> Yeah, because it was getting to the point where we're just like, oh gosh, it's so bad. I, I mean, mean, we'd like filmed like 13 Lore Olympus videos in a row. Yeah. We'd done nothing but Lore Olympus. Yeah, we were kind of losing sight of ourselves. <laughs> and Losing our sanity. Because yeah. Lore Olympus keeps getting worse and worse. Yeah. And, and then we just keep getting dragged in the mud of like, what the F is going on? Yeah, and it's difficult to regulate your tone and know when you're being too I don't, harsh. I don't know. Yeah, too harsh or sticking to a point for too long. And then you can get some distance, get some perspective. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. We're going into this with fresh eyes. Especially but it's the Zoom call. <laughs> so. Yeah, it's the best episode to go into after an extended break from Lore Olympus. Because it's so irritating. And I checked I checked the date that this was posted. This episode is posted in December 2020. Yeah. The pandemic hit in March 2020. So by the time she's making this joke about all of the Olympians getting onto a Zoom call, A, it doesn't even make sense in universe. Because they can just fly to a central meeting space. In fact, Hades met Zeus in a central meeting space only a few chapters ago. Yeah. And B, it's like the only reason we're having a Zoom call in this episode is to make a joke about modern day events, which aren't very funny if you're living in America. Friggin' tone deaf Rachel. <laughs> yeah. You know, just because New Zealand had like a nothing death toll doesn't mean that you can just like make fun of the pandemic that was, like, really bad for people in America. Now people in China were being stuck under zero COVID policy. Yeah. So, like, just the flippancy of this episode and the fact that she's, like, torpedoing her own world building just to make a reference to real-life events in such a, like, um, such a blasé, like, uh, flippant manner. Yeah. It's really irritating because it's, like... It's not even funny. Yeah, I mean, like, I, I don't really care so much about, like... Oh, yeah, I don't care about pandemic. the ethics, but I'm yeah. just saying, like, it's just another reason. Like, I'm only saying this because I don't like Rachel. <laughs> yeah. <You know>? Well, <laughs> like, I don't like this series. I don't like Rachel. Yeah. So for her to put a Zoom call in here is like, teehee, aren't I so funny? It's like... No, you're not. <laughs> yeah, tell, tell that to the moms who had to, you know, keep their kids at home and work from home while also having to manage the household. And you start talking about how... Like, you could go into, like all the ways that it's like insensitive. I mean, just for me personally, it's not funny. And as a C point to your A and B about it not making sense of the world building, somebody else confirmed also that all the gods can teleport. They can so teleport. So it makes even less sense. That's what I'm saying. Right? It makes no sense. Yeah. There's no reason for them to have a Zoom call. And everyone knows that Persephone is at Hades' house because Hermes told him that. Yeah. So why didn't they all just show up outside of Hades' house and be like, Hades, let us in. Yeah. Or we're going to arrest you too. Because it's like, it's the same thing that she keeps doing over and over again, where it's the one episode where you have the Attack on Titan equipment and then nothing else. I mean, right? I've never seen a Zoom call at any other point in time in this series ever. They never use it again? They never use it again. She's writing this series episode by episode with no plan whatsoever. And the fact that she threw in the Zoom call as a little teehee, it's like taking two fingers with extremely long, sharp nails and then just stabbing them right in your eyeballs. Like, it's like, it's, it's not funny and you're just drawing attention to the fact that you don't plan your series out at all. You're literally just like, teehee, I thought of this idea while I was on the crapper the other day. Let me put it into my story because yeah. funny, you know? Like, that's what it feels like. Yeah. Am I wrong? Like, am I being over the top? Am I being like... Too harsh? No, you it's know. It's just a Zoom call, Victoria. <laughs> Calm down. No, I mean, honestly, like, I, between the two of us, I probably hate Laura Olympus more than you do. I just don't, I just don't verbalize that. Because it's like, if, like, I could talk for hours about how much I hate, like, all of the ways in which I. You have talked for hours off camera. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> off camera, but, you know. I, I view these videos as more of like a benefit to people. It's entertaining, obviously, to see somebody uh, shred thing, like shred something apart where you're just like, I don't understand the hubbub. It's not good. I, 
everybody keeps telling me that it's good am i missing something here and then you know we get a lot of comments of people saying it's so valid you know validating to see that other people who see what i've been seeing this whole time yeah. right but there's like a point where it's like okay we get it it's bad this is why it's bad let's go on to other ways in which we can have like a productive discussion about how it's bad right and so i agree the zoom call is stupid because it screws up the world building and it's it's just it's, it's like it's like putting a lampshade on the fact that you don't plan your story. Yeah. That's why it's ultimately really grating for me, because it's like, was it worth it for a reference to a real-life event? That's not even funny. No. It's not worth it. And it just wastes your time, because the Zoom call, again, like you said, nothing happens, nothing comes of it. It's not like Persephone revealing that she's in Hades' location leads to them storming his house. The next scene, the next episode is her, like, forcing him to take a bath with her. Yeah. It has nothing to do with the Zoom call. In fact, up till episode 140, which is what we read to, the Zoom call doesn't affect anything. Hera just shows up as if she was prompted by the Zoom call to show up, but yet again, that was another example of the two, like, multiple storylines being completed. Yeah. So it's like this whole episode, basically, to put a cap in things and stop my, like, repetitive rambling, this whole episode is pointless. Yeah, you could say that about a lot of the episodes. Um, but especially this one is, yeah. like... Not only is it pointless, but it's drawing attention to the fact that it's pointless. It is. But it thinks it's being cute, when I would argue that that's, like, the most grating part of it. Like, you could argue that the Cerberus episode was pointless, when Cerberus shows up and she's, like, in the field or whatever, but at least it was cute, you yeah. know? This one is pointless, and it's drawing attention to that fact. Yeah. And it thinks really highly of itself, obviously, from the way she kept showing, like, their backgrounds failing and the technology issues. Yeah. But it's like, you're just literally celebrating the fact that you can't write a story. Yeah, and, you know, a big defense that I just think is a load of barnacles, honestly, <laughs> that people, like, supporters of... I've seen supporters of this comic specifically. Uh, the thing that they try to say to shut down criticism mm -hmm. is, uh, first, they try to do the whole, like, let people enjoy things, right? And it's you like... You can enjoy it if you want to. Don't yeah. watch these videos, then. Exactly, and it's like, what does me... Look, I enjoy... Picking I enjoy apart. crapping on <laughs> Yeah, of this. I enjoy. Let me enjoy that. You yeah, know? and it's like, I think it's more beneficial. You'll get more from it if you look at it with a critical perspective than you would if you just read it just as it is and just accept it uh, like without criticism at all. Some people don't want to criticize the media that they consume ever, which is like fine. That's you. If you want your brain to be a sponge and just collect everything that you read without any hesitation whatsoever, then like don't complain about representation in the media. Don't complain about bad messaging in the media because you're the person who's like, oh, I'm anti-criticism. Just let people enjoy things. You can't have one or the other. You can't argue that media needs representation, media needs to have, you know, good, like, not good morality or correct morality, like, this isn't the Hayes Code, but, like, you shouldn't be portraying, for example, toxic abusive relationships in a positive light. Yeah. Um, you can't argue that on the one hand and, like, call yourself uh, on, like, you know, socially woke or whatever, and then on the other hand say, let people enjoy their media without criticism. Exactly. Those two concepts, those two ideas are fundamentally opposed to each other. So either you believe that we should have media literacy, representation, and, like, positive messaging, or at least if there's negative stuff in media, it should be pretty clear, or it should either be clear that it's negative or it should be neutral in voice instead of positive, or you should say, let people enjoy the media that they enjoy, and then you should be okay with racism in media. Exactly. Because anybody should be able to enjoy the media that they enjoy. Yeah. You know, you can't have it both ways. It's a double standard. And it's a double standard. You can't yeah. be both woke and then, I just want to enjoy my problematic phase. Exactly, you know? exactly. So, that being said, definitely think... I mean, I don't even know how much of that, <laughs> how much of that tone and that tangent is going to make it into the final cut. If the whole thing did, fine. That's... I think I think the last point was interesting. It was a good point. Yeah. It was a really good point. Um, but yeah, like that's just just by now you know how we feel about Laura Olympus, right? We're not going to sugarcoat it for our own sanity. Right? Uh, if you're sticking with us this far, you're, you're the real MVPs yeah. and that you've already gotten. We've already gotten past like the slow boiling frog of like people who were once fans getting used to the idea of like us ripping it apart. Yeah. You know, some people who started watching our series were like, oh, I wasn't sure or I used to like Laurel and and then I watched your series and I realized I hated it. Um, we didn't start off this negative because the comic didn't start off this negative. Yeah. And I wasn't reading the comic. I've never read the comic with this close of an eye before. So I wasn't this as aware of how flawed it is um and how like it's simultaneously flawed and also condescending to yeah. you as a reader so um at this point in the story uh you know episode 135 season two i'm only this negative because i've been reading 135 episodes and desiccating them in extreme detail on yeah. video 
you know, week after week after week, I did not feel this strongly towards Lore Olympus. I was like, oh yeah, I don't like the art, like the way the characters are drawn, and I know the story gets really bad Yeah. Um, after a certain point, and I didn't really like it to begin with. It wasn't my cup of tea. I don't know why it's so popular. Yeah. But now I'm like, freaking Lore Olympus sucks. It's like one of the worst comics I've ever read. Yeah, and the fact that it's so popular just makes you go like, why? <laughs> yeah, know? no, reading Lore Olympus in excruciating detail for this series has made me like Let's Play even more. Yeah. And I never, I always never liked Let's Play. Like, I was never a fan of Let's Play. I was never a fan of Let's Play or Lauren Olympus. I think I, I, I was, I remember way back in the old days, I would send you screenshots of yeah. both. And, um, for both series, I'd be making fun of them. Yeah. But, like, at some point, I stopped reading Lauren Olympus because I was like, this sucks. And, but I kept writing, reading Let's Play and sending you pictures and being like, this comic's hilarious, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I, even back then, I didn't have strong feelings one way or another, and now it's like, if, if I wasn't doing this for YouTube, I would keep reading it. No, same. 100%. Like, I wouldn't <laughs> even read Lore Olympus, just not even the first chapter. I wouldn't read it, because I don't like the pink girl, blue guy thing uh, right off the bat. And honestly, like, I read the part that people actually liked, and I hated it. <laughs> you know? So I definitely wouldn't continue it because it's just not my thing, right? It's the same thing with like with our discussions. Let's play. I would not continue to watch something that I didn't like. And the same thing goes for people on these videos that we make. Mm -hmm. If if the tone bothers you, watch something else. I I wouldn't continue reading something or watching something that I hated so much, except for the fact that there's something to glean from this. Mm -hmm. And you know what? 135 episodes in, I'll see it through to the end. It'll be entertaining. I don't know. Maybe well, the other thing is, at some point, it might even get so bad that we can no longer go episode by yeah. episode. It might, it might just be like, no, no. It might just be like, these next ten episodes are pointless, so we're just going to, like, summarize them at a high level and yeah. then just get to the Chronos battle, you know? Yeah. But we'll see. So, I guess with that being said, let's get into episode 135. Muted. Again, at this point, like, the chapter titles, it's, like, not related to anything at all. It's just like, oh, let me think of a chapter title at 11.59 p.m. Yeah, you want to talk about not related to anything at all? Hades is on the phone with somebody here. And I know! He says, no, yes, fantastic, mm-hmm, and thanks. Who's he talking to? What are they talking about? <laughs> it's like a fake phone call. <laughs> it's like, he's like, okay, I'm alone in my office with Persephone, and I don't want to talk to her. And he never even hangs up the phone, and the phone is a gray rectangle. It has no buttons on it whatsoever. No. He, he never, like, hang, he doesn't hang up the phone. He just goes, thanks. And then she turns, and then he goes, ugh. But you never show him, like, turning off his phone, putting it on the table, and then swiveling and going, ugh. No, but, like, what was the point of showing him on the phone if that conversation wasn't important? Right? Because that's what Rachel thinks it looks like to work at a corporate office. Oh, my gosh. And that's she, what I do all day. Like, I just sit at, at, on my on my phone, at a desk, and go, yep, uh-huh, great, fantastic, thanks, mm-hmm, yep, uh-huh, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. That's what I do all day. And the, the picture, like, the panel for Persephone's weird. She's not writing anything on her scroll. No, she's, she's just sitting there. She's just sitting there with a blank scroll. Like, it's really freaking weird. What's the point of showing her with a scroll, and what's the point of the phone call? And I she mean, looks different in every one of these panels, yeah. too. Yeah, and it's just... It's all drawn by a different person. Just bizarre and terrible and, and so. i like i think it was a mistake to put her in this off model hairstyle because it's never consistent it's not consistent it's like drawn three different ways it's, it only exposes that three different people are drawing this yeah anyway then he goes ugh, and it says incoming call from zeus slash olympians <laughs> and then he says you might not want to be here for this and she again looks totally different sometimes i think the olympians share a brain cell i could say that about you and persephone dude <laughs> And the dog. And the dog. <laughs> the same brain cell. It's the dog's the, brain cell. The farting dog brain cell. And then he clicks on accept, and this isn't centered, and it's killing me. No, the whole graphic and the incoming call thing is like... Well, not only that, it's none of these are centered. No. None of these are centered! Click the grid, dude! Turn the grid on! No. He, Hello, I've called a meeting for, of the Olympians. Well, some of them... Zeus lost his shoulder in the war. <laughs> He's also doing the cholo thing. I know. On top of that. Like a cholo. And then you have Hera wearing a sun hat that says I'm with, and then a t-shirt that says I'm with stupid. And she's presumably right off screen because that purple drape is like the same drape or something. And then there's more Artemis defamation. 
Artemis is being um, attacked and defamed in this scene. Where like, why is she drawn like that? She's not even holding onto the mouse cable. The cable's not even in her fist. She looks like, like, she she drew her, like... She looks like a Spongebob background character. Yeah. It looks like the DA guy. <laughs> 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 it's her joke here. Yeah. Poseidon's molesting himself. Poseidon's got a football-shaped face. Yeah, on his beanbag. And you've got Hermes with his sandwich. And a cat PNG. Yeah. Which is, like, a reference, I guess, to the guy who turned himself into a cat. I don't know what... I don't care... And then you've got, um, that's Athena, I yeah, think? Yeah, and Hestia. And Hestia. Again, in the void. Everybody's holding stuff like this. It's very strange. She's holding her owl like that. And then, um, Ares... Is vibrating in hell. Yeah, and his screen name is not the same as everybody else's. And Aphrodite's got one of those ring lights. And that's the extent... Like, she doesn't even have a backdrop. She just has a ring light, because that's the extent of, like, characterization for well, her character. I mean, why do they even have... Like the zoom. Why would you even include Aphrodite and Athena if they don't do anything? Like they don't do anything in this meeting, and she doesn't care about them. No. Like this, there's no point including them because it doesn't further. Like again, going back to like goal-oriented writing, including Aphro Aphrodite and Athena and all these other characters, it doesn't serve a, a character purpose. It doesn't serve a plot purpose. It doesn't set anything up, and it doesn't pay off anything that was set up prior. So like, why even include them in the scene? Like, why not just have Zeus? Why is he even calling the meeting? I don't know. There's no... Like, what was the point of this meeting? <laughs> he asked Poseidon if he's wearing pants. And again, Poseidon says, this is short notice. And he says, are you wearing pants? And he goes, short notice. But y the zoom camera doesn't zoom in on people like no, that. No, it doesn't. And then Hades says, hello, Zeus, uh, everybody. What can I do for you? This is so... And then just copy-paste. She, she couldn't even bother to redraw the characters you could have just had like a regular phone call i spoke with hermes and he mentioned that you have persephone like this is the most clunky he's called him before too on the phone yeah yeah is this true oh my god air suck that is true and then she shows up and says hello again you've got the zoom camera that's moving around it doesn't do that and then nobody responds no they she shows everybody's uh little grid down there but nobody responds nobody to responds persephone. to persephone You've got stupid Zeus with the stupid, like, crayon Shinchan expression yeah. again. And yeah. then Hera raises an eyebrow and smiles, but that's, like, it. So she sits down, and then she's got the um, Sanpaku eyes again. Mm -hmm. And then Hestia says, Persephone, please don't worry about your scholarship. We're just glad you're safe. I guess that wraps up that plot line, the scholarship. No, because anymore, I right? think even after the 10-year time skip, she's still mentioning the scholarship. <laughs> Something like that. It's really stupid how, like, again, like, she should have, like, cut that off immediately after Apollo assaulted her once she figured out she was able to support herself on the Underworld salary alone. Yeah. She should have been like, I can support myself on the Underworld salary. Let me go withdraw my application from the TGOEN. Because, like, why is it still hanging over her like the Sword of Damocles? So then there's, like, stupid shenanigans. Where Hestia, you're supposed to be muted while I'm talking. Sorry. Artemis said her mic isn't working. What is that even? She's got a speech bubble saying that her mic isn't working. And then, why does she need to talk? What does she? Po what can she possibly say about Persephone Zeus, being it? Zeus just said you're supposed to be muted while I'm talking, and then she said Artemis said she can't use her microphone, but Artemis never says anything. She What What does she have to say that's so important? She never comes back. No. She never comes back and says anything. So why did she even bring up the fact that her mic wasn't working? I'm to say excellent work for the act of wrath. And then he says, if you ever want to join me for a rampage, just let me know. And then you've got more stupidity. Aphrodite rightfully saying, excuse me, mm -hmm. right? And Zeus says, I'm trying to execute justice here. How? You know what's also really stupid? Zeus is supposed to be, like, remember when he was doing the interview with the Vampire Act of Wrath interrogation? He was like, Zeus has a mind to go all out on you. And then Persephone looked afraid while we saw, like, a panel of Zeus doing the Kamehameha with Persephone in his hands, showing that Zeus is, like, somebody to be feared and somebody to be reckoned with. Yeah. Having Zeus look like a stupid gonk trying to execute justice over a Zoom call where everyone's, like, stomping all over him because they don't can't get their Zoom settings to work correctly completely undercuts that. Why am I supposed to take this seriously? Why am I supposed to take Persephone hiding out from Zeus seriously if he's such an incompetent? Like, the tone, the tone is all over the place, you know? Like, it doesn't make any sense. Is Lower Olympus supposed to be a comedy? 
No. It's supposed to be drama romance. But she keeps undercutting her own drama with, like, stupid comedy that's out of place. And it's not even funny. No. Like, I, like I said, um, in one of my episode breakdowns, I was like, has anyone ever laughed at Laura Olympus ever? If you have, why? <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, what is funny? If you, if you specifically found this scene funny at one point or another, what's funny about it? I don't get it. Um, especially when we know what the story, like, what has happened right before this in the story, what's happening after this in the story. This is like, it's like, again, putting a fart joke in the middle of, like, a death, dramatic death No, it's sequence. like, it's like turning Persephone's act of wrath, the genocide of the humans, into, like, a bunch of, like, oh my god, I'm so sorry, tiny screaming. But yeah, and then we have Hera, who has not moved at all this entire sequence. But she's magically in the next panel with Zeus. How does that work? Because she's, like, supposedly in the same area. I mean, but, but she didn't move. Yeah, she's, like, leaning back in her chair or something, but... And not only that, the curtain's facing the opposite way. Yeah, like, it's just, it's just, the more you think about it, the worse it is. That wouldn't be the background if she was right there. No. <sighs> It'd be, like, a hallway with the, the window here and the curtain there, but... No, no you'd be able to see the other side of, yeah. like, you would be able to see the back corner of the room. Uh-huh. And, like, the window would be, like, in perspective. Yeah. And then, um... Freaking, you would either see the edge of Zeus or, like, his desk or something. Yeah, the back of his chair right there. Yeah, the back of his chair. Yeah. And so, uh, Zeus here is pulling a Apollo. And yeah. he's saying, Hades, I assume that you just didn't have time to escort Persephone to Oh me. my god. No. Oh my god. <laughs> Hades says, aw, waste of panels. That is not the case. You could have... You really could have just had it in one panel. Why? Yeah, why does he have to say, uh... Like, I mean, the more the comic goes on, the more it, like, has these... Like, there's at least three or four of these already. Yeah. Several of these, where the, the characters... Like, forget the, the lame jokes that waste your time. There's so many panels where the characters do nothing and say nothing, and it wastes your time. But, I mean, even the thing where he says, I assume that you just didn't have time to escort Persephone to me, Hades told Hermes to his face, I'm not giving her up. Yeah. So no, Zeus. Unless like, Hermes didn't tell him that. Why would he leave that out? <laughs> That's because ev because everyone communicates, like, they speak different languages in this comic. <laughs> or they only say, like, one thing at a time. And yeah. It's like, <laughs> it's like in, when, when we said Avatar 2, oh, that Tolkien, he, he killed people. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> oh, no, 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 he, he just tried to kill the humans. Exactly, and exactly. Okay, that's, 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 a, that's a bit different, That's right? very different. Yeah, so then... He reveals, and you just have reaction shots, and people just stock still with reaction shots. And he says, young lady, I command you, you Again, to you could have just in. cut to Zeus saying, young lady, I command you to turn yourself in. But when he says that is not the case, he doesn't expand on that. Like, I just didn't have time to, to deliver you to her. And then he goes, oh, now you have to turn yourself in. He didn't even say, like, why? What are you guys doing? You think you can outrun justice? There's no, like, rhyme or reason to the logic. And again, here. what Zeus is saying does not even directly respond to what Hades just said. <laughs> He could have been like, why? You, don't tell me you've fallen for her tricks too. Or I, were you really this stupid Hades, you know? Unless I, you guys were in it together. Unless right? you were in on it together, I'm going to have to assume that you're both undermining my rule, you know? Like, but no. It, nothing that he says is directly responding to anything that Hades said. And then you get the stupid underworld treaty. Not only that, this attempt to make Persephone look really smart when her eyebrows are that, or when her eyes are that crooked and that close together. <laughs> Again, what she's saying doesn't match what's going on at the panel. According to section 34.5H of the Olympus Underworld Treaty, I think Olympus Underworld should have, like, a dash between it. Olympus, Olympus dash Underworld Treaty. My location means I fall under the jurisdiction of the king of the underworld. So, um, Hades. For me to leave, you would need to initiate extradition. I, I am pretty sure... Events earlier in the story directly contradict that. That's what I was trying to think. Because I know Demeter, she should also be protected by Hades because she was in the underworld. No, for she's business. in. She was in the mortal realm. Okay, she was in the mortal realm for business. Wait, wait, no. Actually, international law. If a if a criminal commits a criminal act in the United States and then flees to France, for example. Yeah. Like I'm thinking of Roman Polanski. <laughs> okay. <yeah. laughs> if France has decided not to extradite him, even though he's committed a, a criminal acts in America. Yeah. Um, because there's no like solid extradition policy between the United States and France. So France could technically harbor... Well, I don't even know if that's technically true, but I know there are certain countries like Jamaica. It's really easy as a criminal to hide out in Jamaica because they don't 
necessarily cooperate with the United States um, extradition procedure. So they won't necessarily kick you out just because you're a criminal and the U.S. is wor- looking for you. Yeah. So but it doesn't matter that she committed her act of wrath in the mortal realm. No. So I'm trying to think of uh, what happened in the story, though, specifically about the Olympus Underworld Treaty and the location falling under the jurisdiction of the King of the Underworld. You know what directly contradicted that? The paparazzi. The That's paparazzi is from the mortal realm. And Hecate ripped his eyeball out under some BS uh, rule of, uh, according to my client, blah, 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 section law. The same stupid legal jargon as in this scene. According to this law of the underworld, we have the right to extract justice. Wait, I actually thought of what directly contradicts that underworld Olympus treaty. Um, Zeus issued a warrant for her arrest, and the guy was going to perform the citizen's arrest on her in the hotel. Um, He couldn't initiate that citizen's arrest for her. That wouldn't have held water, according to this treaty. No. That specifically directly contradicts this, as in, in the same sequence of events. Yeah. But also, Hades uh, got justice on somebody who wasn't falling under his purview yeah. in, like, episode 30-something. Yeah, because Alex ends up in, in the mortal realm. He's from the mortal realm. Well, he, he ends up in the hospital that's either in the mortal realm or in Olympus. Because when they go to the hospital, it's not in it's the It's in Olympus. Yeah. Yeah, because he's Tori's roommate. And yeah. Tori's an Olympi- Olympian. Yeah. So Hades already <laughs> got justice against one of Zeus's... Oh. Against one of Zeus's citizens. So, like, this... That directly... So, what? Zeus can't get justice on somebody in the underworld, but Hades can rip out the eyeball of an Olympian? Yeah. Yeah, I'm not surprised. I knew there was something, because I was like, this seems so That's fake. what immediately dropped, uh, came to my mind, yeah. because it's like rules for thee, but not for me. Yeah. And like, he was totally... If that's true, then Hades has already committed an act of treason against Zeus. Exactly. But not even an act of treason. It would be an act of warfare, because now they're talking as if the three realms are separate countries. Yeah. So, by uh, Hades committing a crime or getting justice from somebody who's a citizen of Zeus's realm, he's already overstepped his bounds and, com- and basically committed an act of warfare mm-hmm. or like violated Zeus's sovereignty. He's already done that. Yeah. And now he's harboring a criminal. And then again, Zeus responds with something completely unrelated. Keep this up and you'll wish you had a punishment like Prometheus. Nobody mentioned Prometheus, dude. Nobody mentioned Nobody that. even mentioned the punishment. No. So then she croaks. And there's a click click and they go on mute. And you cut to Hera watching them on mute for no reason. And then he says, I demand that you unmute yourselves. You know what would solve this issue is if you didn't have a stupid Zoom call and you just teleported there. Yeah, I know. And then Hades says, you are not to threaten her like that again. And Zeus says, I'll do whatever I like. And then he responds to something completely unrelated that nobody cares about. Do you know where I found her after your warrant was released? I found her in an abandoned junkyard on the verge of hibernation. (laughs) Zeus. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, injecting some sanity into the conversation. I don't see what this has to do with that happened under our leadership. That's disgraceful. You know what else happened under your leadership? The genocide of an entire immortal village. Oh my gosh. And then Zeus starts vibrating like an electron. I guess that's why he's the god of thunder. Oh boy. (laughs) What's that Pokemon called? Uh, Voltorb? Yeah, Voltorb. (laughs) Self-destruct? He's going full Voltorb on him. The situation could have been handled so much better. Persephone is clearly using you. Oh, he's right. But why do they both just stare at each other like I don't that? Know. It's stupid. It's like somebody farted on mute. Right? No, again, it feels like she like was watching like an argument and then like someone went too far and then they were both like, I can't believe you said that. You know, <laughs> like doesn't that happen in the Prince of Egypt? <laughs> I don't know. I am the morning and the evening star. I don't know. It could As happen. the man you called father. <laughs> Dude, it happens in so many things where it's like they're escalating and then... Someone I'm, goes too far. But it's like the same thing with Demeter and Persephone screaming at each other. Yeah, right? but it's like a Disney thing. It's like an animation thing. Yeah. Yeah, and then he says, we'll see you when she's ready. Good afternoon. Wait. What does that mean, we'll see you when she's ready? Do they have any intent to actually see them when... Persephone's ready? They are talking about Persephone, right? She? Wait, 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 wait. If that's the afternoon, then when did when was the interview conducted? In the morning, I guess. When did... So she woke up in his bed. He brought the teacup that vanished. Yeah. And then Eros came over. Yeah. So Eros was only over for like five minutes? Yeah. 
Because then he was gone. No, but then they did like a time skip. And then he was like, how was Arrow? So then she's like, oh, he doesn't matter. Just like, <laughs> nobody else in this comic matters except for you and me. And then he pulls out the pad of paper. And then they do the interview. And the interview, like, it, assumingly, I assume it took hours. Or like an hour, at the very least. I thought it took as long as it took to read it. Because there's no time skip. But then immediately after that, he takes her to the library after all those teleports. Yeah. And then tells her about his trauma. And then after that, they watch the video. Yeah. No time passes. Like, there's no time skipping. Do these guys right? ever go to the bathroom? I feel like I'm watching 24. No, yeah, yeah, it's like <laughs> do, 24. Do, 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 do. It is like 24. <laughs> the following takes place between 8 a.m. and 9 a.m. Events occur in real time. No time passes whatsoever. Eros gets there and says, now let me tell you about my day, and then he leaves. <laughs> he never tells her about his day? No, because we just cut away, because it's like, nobody cares, Eros. <laughs> First off, I put on this horrible fashion mistake. <laughs> yeah. I woke up and chose violence. Yeah. And put on this awful Gilligan's Island outfit. Yeah, and then he ate some of her honeycomb. <laughs> and then he ate some of, his honey uh, some of her honeycomb, went shopping for nerdy puzzles, and yeah. brought them over. Yeah, all in the morning. It was all in the morning, though. And it's, it's the afternoon now. So then Zeus says... Wait, no, no, no. Because then after he tells her his trauma, then they go to the office. Yeah. And they get coffee because they have drive through coffee mugs. Yeah. Then they go to the office. Then Minthy embarrasses herself. Yeah. And then they go to his office. And then immediately after that, they take the Zoom call. Yeah. They haven't even had breakfast yet. She had honeycomb. Oh, my God. And he had coffee. Oh, my God. That's how they do things. This is like 24. It is. They, she shows you every single minute. Which is why when she goes back and says, well, this is what was happening. No, that, that, that never happened. It, we saw was, everything. Yeah, there was never time for that to happen. You know, it's like when Persephone goes back after the shopping center, goes back home and destroys her phone. That's like instantly happening at the same time that Hades is trying to call her. She yeah. destroys her phone after he tries to call her because he tries to call her. He tries to call her after watching the video, which is only like five minutes long. Yeah, and it's like five minutes after she leaves. Yeah. And she goes shopping for that handkerchief. And, and runs into Apollo, yeah. and then goes home, and all the time that it took for her to run into him and travel took less time than it would have taken for Hades to watch the video and then call her. It took it took more time. Yeah, it took it would have taken yeah. more time than for Hades to watch the video and call. She her. doesn't get a phone call. She doesn't check her phone for calls. Nothing. She just destroys it. Her phone doesn't even go off. <laughs> Maybe Hades watched the video a bunch of times and then played it at point two five speed. <laughs> No, he didn't, because we saw everything that happened. We saw, there no time passed oh at all. Oh my god. No time passed at all. She just shows everything as soon as it happens instantaneously. It happens as quickly as it takes you to read the comic, which is why she puts those micro expressions into it. Because everything is happening in the comic as fast as it takes you to read it. Oh my god. It doesn't even, like, where you cut to a new location, you show somebody walking down the hallway, and you're like, okay, five minutes has passed because it took them a while to go to this new location. She doesn't even do that. She has to show every single micro expression, so everything is happening as fast as you can oh read it. Oh my god. It's like it's like the Truman show. Yeah. Or twenty four. My <sighs> whole body hurts. I, I don't probably even... overdid it today. What what is she talking about? I don't even know where she is. There's no establishing shot. I think it's Hades bedroom. But there is no establishing shot, but it's like the same colors as his bedroom, but he never had those bricks. He had like a crest on his wall. Yeah. So she says, yeah, I probably overdid it to say, what are you what talking did, about? What did she do? She didn't do anything today. Not only that, they also talked to Hermes. Yeah, that morning. Oh, how much did they do in a morning? It was a, a very, like, a very friggin' event-filled morning. No, Hermes coming there took his, it, it, it happened in as much time as it took you to read that scene, right? Hermes gets there, he goes... Hey, uh, why are you so on the offensive, boss? And, uh, so have you seen Persephone lately? No, I haven't. She came out and says, hey, it's my fault you're in trouble. No, right? he says, um, Zeus is looking for Persephone, yeah. and then Hades says, tell him I'm not gonna give her up. So Zeus is the one to expose that he has Persephone. Yeah. Because then, because that's why when Persephone said I shouldn't have done what I did, we were like, what did you do? You didn't do anything, Persephone! And now she's saying I overdid it today. Didn't do anything. She didn't do anything today! No. She did nothing! What does she do? She's a person who puts her name first on a group project when she goes, I'm sorry guys, I can't help you with the group project because I'm like so busy doing but everything else. But not only that, like in, in Let's Play, and this is like going to the cringiness of Let's Play, yeah. um, every time Sam does something moderately, like physically strenuous, she's like, oh, I'm so sore, I overdid it today because she's like a super weak flower or whatever. But Persephone is like characterized as athletic, like she's always swimming 
Or like when she's in the mortal realm, she's like flying around or like going on walks. Skipping on those pillars. Yeah. Yeah. So what did she do? And they drove to his office. She didn't yeah. even fly there. No. She did nothing. And she says my whole body is sore. She didn't even go to work. She hasn't been to work in days. She skipped the Friday. I think mean, the last time she went to work was like on Tuesday or something. Her birthday. Or was it Wednesday? Friday was the slap. She had Monday off because she said it's a three-day weekend. Mm -hmm. I think it was Tuesday. Yeah. And then Wednesday, um, she didn't show up. And then Thursday, Hades skipped work to hang out with Persephone all day. I thought she had the previous Friday off. She had the Friday and the two Monday off. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, she did nothing, but she's exhausted. And her hair is totally different. Yeah. And her face is totally different. I'm not healing as fast as I would like. Doesn't she have healing powers? Why does she always talk to herself? That's the thing that bothers me the most. Is like she always talks to herself like she's in a kids movie. There's no internal monologue. I mean, we all know that she used to do internal monologue in the story. So it's not like all of a sudden, well, it is like all of a sudden she's talking to herself out loud, but previously in the story we have seen people's thoughts. No, it's only Hades that gets internal monologues. Persephone gets like none. No, but I'm saying like Minthy and Hera and all these other characters get internal monologues. No, Persephone has like rarely gotten like the only yeah. time i can think of where she had an internal monologue was during the assault yeah but I, i'm saying like or and then also when she was thinking about going to the obgyn yeah but it's like it's not like she's never done it before for persephone so i don't know why she's not doing it for persephone right now right it's not like the thing like in butterfly dream where you only see jay's thoughts because he gets a brain worm mm -hmm. right it's not like that no there's there's no reason for her to not show her having an internal monologue here she could have had this entire discussion in her head. Yeah, I know. She didn't even have to do that. She could have just done, you know, visual storytelling where she sits down, massages her back, looks at her thing, sighs, and then you show her looking outside to the hall, and then you show her tiptoeing to the bath. Dude, you could have cut through all of that, showed Hades' house as an opening, like, establishing shot, and then showed Persephone in a bathrobe with her hair wrapped into a towel, padding down the hallway with a spare towel to go to the bath, to go to the bath. You see that? Like if she was listening to us. Dude, her bruises are a totally different color. Her face looks totally different. What? <laughs> <laughs> we were just saying, where's the eternal monologue? No, and she even has the scene where she's walking down the hall in the bathrobe. And then she says this part out loud. Why? You don't have to have them talking in every panel. I mean... I think she thinks you do, otherwise people will get bored and not read your comic if you have, like, dialogue-less scenes. It's like what Disney does to Miyazaki movies. Again, this panel isn't even centered. It's like, it's like 4060, that line in mm -hmm. the middle of the panel. The center focal point of the panel is like 40% of but the it, way through It's the like panel. a CGI model. So why didn't you just adjust it to the right? You can easily just, you know... I like to snap to grid, you snap on your Cartesian coordinates, your X, Y, and Z, just go on the X or something, or whatever it is. And then she's still talking to nobody in particular. This seems like a lot for one being. Oh well. What when is... in Rome, I guess. What does Rome that mean? Rome doesn't exist what yet! What does that mean? Rome doesn't exist yet! <laughs> I can't wait for them to start talking about Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and she's still talking. Oh, that does feel good. And even in the next one, there's a dot dot dot. There's like no... It's oh really quiet. God. It really isn't Persephone because you're like a three-year-old that doesn't shut up. She's like one of those little kids who keeps asking, but why? But why? And you just want to slap them. Yeah. It's really quiet. Blowing bubbles. Boo, I'm so bored already. Oh my god, just turn yourself into Zeus. That'll, like, be so exciting, right? <laughs> <laughs> I've got an idea, Persephone. Why don't you go under the water and start swallowing some and see how long you can take that. Oh my gosh. And she says, this is ridiculous. What's ridiculous? It's ridiculous that nobody's entertaining her while she takes a bath. She sounds like such a diva. This she is sounds ridiculous. like a Karen. This is ridiculous. No entertainment with my <laughs> bath? How dare I be bored in my bath? What the heck? 
This is ridiculous. Oh my god. <laughs> Like, who writes this? I'm like cracking over here. And then she pat pats and Hades appears in a fort cloud of smoke. Why didn't she do that when Apollo was threatening her? <laughs> yeah, she didn't pat pat Hades when he was in her house saying, go on a date with me, go out with me. Why didn't she, um, why didn't she summon him when the arrest warrant came out? Just wanted to run to the junkyard. Didn't do a pat pat for Hades then. Is everything okay? Are you hurt? And this is like what I was talking about last time with the Sherry Papini, where it's just like, um, you know, hey, do you want to get dinner? And she just doesn't answer for like three days. And it's like, oh my god, I'm really worried about you. Are, are you okay? Is everything okay? And it's like, oh yeah, I I read your messages. I just didn't want to respond. Oh my you god. Know? And then he sees that she's taking a bath. And he... Is this not like assault? Like, like forcing him to be there when he doesn't want to be? Yeah, I mean, that's... It's a, definitely like sexual harassment. Um, so he does a little turn and he goes, Corey, that serve service is not to be abused. Hades with the beatbox and... Yeah, and he's shaped like a fridge. Yeah, and then the background becomes horribly... The background's really <laughs> bad. <laughs> and the, it looks like the pool turned green because Persephone peed. <laughs> it's a totally different green. It was like a blue green. Now it's like yellow green. Yeah. <laughs> She peed all in that pool. And then she says, get in, keep me company. Yeah, ordering, ordering him around. Yeah, like, total, acting like a total Weinstein. <laughs> <laughs> he says, no, Persephone, I will not get in. And she says, I'm not asking you to give me a sponge bath with your tongue. Hey, but I thought she didn't Yet. know. I, did, I, I thought she didn't know what sleeping your way to the top was. Yeah. Exactly. Why is she suddenly so sassy? I don't know. The water is opaque. That's gross. It's the principle of Why opaque. are you trying to force him to do something he doesn't want to do? Our day has been very long and very difficult. Maybe for you, Hades isn't complaining. Not only that, he's like a workaholic CEO. It's kind of implied that this was his daily routine. Yeah, and then she says, so join me. Like, I really don't like that she is like strong arming him into doing stuff i mean earlier she said so that's a yes to something that he said right um that wasn't earlier i think that's in one of the latest episodes no i think it's it was earlier in this one too she's like flying and he says little goddess i said no or something and she goes but like, oh yeah yeah when he she's like take me with you to the office yeah and then she's like so that's a yes and then he's like that's not an argument yeah yeah but she also does that in one of the latest episodes too. yeah it's obnoxious and it's like boundaries dude she just steamrolls him all the time it's like so annoying to read and it's also like she acts like she knows that she'll eventually get her way anyway because he's so easily manipulated by her yeah so she's like I, i'm not even gonna bother to try manipulating you i'm just gonna say yes and then i'm not even gonna bother arguing you're just gonna eventually acquiesce because you know that you have to say yes. So the top comments on this chapter was, Hera, I'm with stupid. We stand a queen. Iconic as per usual. The banner, Percy taking the lead, the reference to Zoom calls. Why is the reference to Zoom calls iconic? The blatant disregard for Zeus's inadequacies as a leader. What a chapter. Oh my god, no wonder Rachel thinks she's like writing award-winning content. She's already acting These like- These guys are giving her a sponge bath of their tongues! Yeah, she's already acting like his wife. I'm so obsessed with this side of her. She isn't afraid anymore. She was never afraid. It's almost like she planned to be assaulted by Apollo. Okay, if the, the thing you guys can take away from this comic is that you could literally make something that is like horrible, but if you have the right audience, if you're there at the right place in the right time, people will love it. Oh, Jesus Christ, it's so bad. And these, these people are all sniffing her, her freaking kiwi farts. They're eating your diarrhea with the spoon. <laughs> oh, Rachel, this diarrhea. Oh, oh, it's so good. Preach. We stand a queen. Oh, diarrhea, my favorite. Oh, Rachel. Rachel, eat more eggs next time, Rachel. Oh, we st so iconic. This diarrhea is so iconic. The bits of green, the oh bits of uh, undigested corn. Iconic, Rachel. Oh my god. Oh, yes, queen. Oh my god. Gonna have to cut that out too. Oh my god. <laughs> Every time you, you read a chapter of Laura Olympus, you get a little memory like 
that. <laughs> and it makes it all worth it at the end. Okay, so this episode begins with a content warning. Hey, you can't make fun of it because it contains d discussions of bolded and extra large font sexual trauma. Oh, God. I'm so sorry. This comic gave me sexual trauma. Got <laughs> <laughs> to cut that out. So this is episode 136 and it's called Not Mistaken. And you start off with Persephone and then Hades with a stupid tiny towel on his head. And there's a wall between them. But, the, like, I checked, because when I first read this, I was super confused. I went back to the previous chapter to see if there was a wall. It didn't look like a wall, it just looked like a boundary division. Yeah, like something that you'd walk across. Yeah, yeah. like it didn't, it looked like it just like a pool, like two separate pools right next to each other. It didn't look like a wall. No, he must have drained it. And also this perspective of the wall doesn't make doesn't any sense. It doesn't make any sense. It's not head on, but it's shot in a way that to make it look like head on. And you know it's not head on because you can see the level of the water. Exactly. If it is head on, then they should be level <clears throat> with the staircase, but they're not. And so oh, she looks horrible. Oh in this my god, panel. she looks really bad in that panel. She goes, I really don't mind if you're on this side, Weinstein. And her hair thing looks totally different. Yeah, her it's got hair a bow looks on it now. Different. He said, I don't think I'd be a good host if I were on your side. What does that even mean? I don't know, but he's smiling and the towel is on his eyes now. She says, I mean, I'm used to it. I promise I don't mind. Used to what? Bathing with other people? I think she... Wasn't it revealed that she used to bathe with Hermes all the time? Yeah, she says he, he's seen me naked, like, plenty of times. Yeah, she says she's used to bathing with dudes. But this is weird because she got, like... She turned Flustered. into butterflies. Yeah. And she's... She, with the eye thing, she got, like, a power overload. Yeah. So what... This is very inconsistent. She just wanted to have Persephone, like, relentlessly hit on Hades. Oh, this is... This, this sexual trauma because he hits her <laughs> <laughs> so he says nope and he throws a towel up at her and she says my hair and then she splashes down and he well, what about her hair i don't know it didn't do anything to her hair is it because she fell in the water and then she said my hair but they have like you should have had my hair here then yeah like, lower in the panel after she fell in the water yeah so he chuckles and then he gets back in the water and he says you okay she drowned <laughs> she said i don't like what zeus said which part? He's pretty annoying at the moment. And she said, I'm not using you. After she is, like, clearly using him. No, you she know what? She to summon him there, That's and is using him for No, you know what You, you know, know what happened? So. She got nervous because she, like, felt like her plan was exposed, so she quickly called him there so she could seal the deal and then uh, make him forget that that's what Zeus said and, like, get him bonded to her really quickly yeah. so that she can keep using him with impunity. Basically, yeah. as long as he's, like, in love with her, then he won't question it. You yeah, because, I mean, that's... Like, like, it's really suspicious when you think of the timing. It is really suspicious, but it's exactly... She is exactly using him in this very scene. She padded to bring him there to for entertain her entertainment. Her, yeah. yeah, we saw before he arrived there. It's not like we just cut to Hades being summoned, and then he gets there. And then she's like, hey, you know, I'm not feeling too great. Do you think we could talk about what happened today? No, we know she was bored, and she just summoned him because she was bored. Mm -hmm. So that's really weird that, that she would make that the direction of the conversation. Additionally, can other people summon Hades as well with the pattern? Yeah. Zeus. So why didn't Zeus, Zeus do dude, that? Just, you know, like, pat, pat, man. And she goes, you know that, right? The, panel. the got, anatomy is really bad. He's got no armpit. The anatomy is, I mean, look at his elbow and his other arm. The, like, the lower arm doesn't make any sense. His nose, what's happening to his nose? I mean, his elbow should be like this. Yeah. But it's not. It's, like, friggin' weird. Yeah, I mean, if you're gonna draw it from that angle, the joint should be pointing out. Yeah, like the that, joint should you know? be pointing up. Yeah. So he says, yeah. yeah. It's frustrating, but try not to let him get to you. It's just something he said to hurt me because I'm not cooperating. And then she quickly does her manipulative thing and says, I'm sorry that you and your brother are fighting because of me. He says, this isn't our first fight and won't be our last. Do you have any siblings? She says, I have a brother. So you know some fighting is normal. And she goes, oh, he's a horse, so he can't really fight with me. I love how this was never brought up earlier in the comic ever. No, not in any of those flashbacks. No. Not when, not when she said, I miss the moral realm, I miss my brother. <laughs> no. <laughs> what brother? <laughs> Nothing. And so, um, and she looks totally different. I know, panel. the shading is gone. Yeah. The background... Everything is different about that panel. It was drawn yeah. by a different person. It's the only conclusion I can make. Yeah. Um, and so then you cut to him. Why? And then he says, come again. And she says, a story for another time. And he says, indeed. And then some time passes. And you cut to Hera. 
Oh my god, that cloud is so bad. Look like at that, ha like, totally caught, phoned in bush. They, they didn't even, uh, they didn't even integrate the asset of, no. of the fence no. over her hand properly. No. Not only that, the fence is no, no clipping over her skirt. Yeah, it's just such, like, you see all the other comics out on the platform that are webtoon originals you see the hard work and effort people put into it to make it like a great product and then you read this and you're like 80 like 95 percent of this panel is empty space yeah <clears throat> she goes for the love of god stop bellowing at me what do you want i need you to back me up on this matter is he walking behind her why wasn't he in the previous panel i don't know but that that shrub is also gone in that <laughs> next panel she goes you haven't consulted with me on a single aspect of this issue why does she have the runny mascara she always, that's what I wanted to ask in the Zoom call. Every time she shows up now, she has, like, the runny mascara. It's really weird. I don't know why. Is, is she crying all the time? I mean... But, like, other characters cry and they don't have running mascara, so I don't know why Hera constantly has running mascara. Yeah, what's with that choice? What's that supposed to mean? I don't know. It's weird. And it's like, it, like I don't want to like speculate too much on it, but I know it's like a freaking like sexual thing for some guys. So it's like, why, like why? It's just weird, you know. Like it's like she was watching Skins or something, and I know there's like a character like Effie or whatever, the Tumblr, like the star of Tumblr. Yeah. In like 2014, didn't she always have like smudged eyeliner and it, running yeah, mascara? It's very Taylor Momsen. Yeah. Type. Damaged. Yeah, damaged. Yeah, that's weird. It just makes her look she's, she's crying all the time. Yeah, it's weird. She says, how can I possibly back you up? Because he hasn't consulted her. I mean, if you try to make sense of the dialogue, none of it makes sense. No. And then she says, how is anyone supposed to back you up? If your reason for not backing him up is because he didn't consult you, he consulted Hades and Poseidon. Like, he consulted Hermes. Like, but there's... not only that, she went out of her way not to include Zeus when Persephone was missing because she said he's a buffoon who overreacts to everything. Exactly. So, but then she was mad because he didn't back her up on Apollo yeah. when she never told him about her vision. So she never consulted him on the issue of Apollo but expected him to back her up unconditionally. Yeah. So she's a hypocrite. Yeah. I mean, again, like if you try to make sense of the writing you're just going to be like, this whole thing sucks. It's yeah. just garbage. She says, Demeter battled in the Titan, Titanomachy. 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 She helped you put you where you are, and you issued a warrant for her arrest without warning. Oh, what Demeter. Does, what does helping you and then issuing a warrant for the arrest for committing a crime have to do with anything? If somebody commits a crime, you don't show them preferential treatment and not issue a warrant for arrest. But what would discussing the issue with Hera have done? She would have said don't do it. So he just went ahead and did it anyway, because, I mean, he knows she wouldn't have let him do it but, but what like and again what what is warning about before the arrest warrant like who is he supposed to warn is he supposed to warn Persephone and Demeter yeah <laughs> like, give you a bit of a head start yeah I'm like what <laughs> what she said and you threatened her daughter with that barbaric punishment oh and you basically told your brother that there is no way the goddess of his choosing could truly value him when when he said uh Persephone is using you Hera is annoying. I know, I know. She's like not Hera. a queen. She's she a, sucks. She's a racist, bratty, and she like entitled. She just views other women as pawns to set up Hades with. Yeah, it's weird. And like her first reaction to Persephone getting assaulted, seeing that vision, was trying to set her up. Supposedly. Apparently. Yeah, she says we're really living up to the six traders dynasty title. And the sky's like, a completely different color. Yeah, and it's like that, again, that sentence has nothing to do with anything. Like, I don't know what point you're trying to make. I'm not even No, really I don't know what these it. characters are saying. No. It's like, honestly, like, it's just white noise. It's just to give you the illusion of progress and story. When it's like, when you actually analyze what they're saying, it's nonsense. It's, it's like, you could have replaced this with web dings. <laughs> and it would have made the same impact. Because nothing comes of this. No. Nothing comes of this. It's not like Hera betrays Zeus. Nothing comes of this. No, and then she, we see that Hera's got lotus feet all of a sudden. Yeah, that's every character. That's every female character in this comic. I hate that. Because, you know, when you see Persephone's feet out of shoes, they she look like... She has, like, hobbit feet. Yeah, n like, poorly drawn regular feet. No, but they're not even, like, normal feet. They're, like, chunky and square. Yeah. They're very big. Yeah. They're not slender. And then you expect me to believe that they all of a sudden look like that when these people wear shoes? Like... She's, like, copying elements of an art style that she likes without understanding no. anything about it. No. It's just... It's like the Dexter's Laboratory feed. It is. It's crap. <laughs> so... Crap. Yeah. Crap. Mega crap. crap. Yeah. <laughs>
They're crap. 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 Mega crap. <laughs> Where are you going? And she says, out. Stupid. And she leaves. And then you cut to these two buffoons in robes. And he says, that was actually pretty good. This looks like two different art styles. Yeah. And it looks like a father and his daughter. It does. It does. She's so small. It's disgusting. So that refreshed thing is like horrible. I know. It's, it's not even centered. And he says, I guess we should eat. You guess, because you haven't eaten anything all day. Yeah. We could get takeout. I've got plenty of menus in the kitchen. He doesn't want to cook her an onion. No, Slow he doesn't know how to cook. Onion. He only, you know, I bet he only cooked minty and onion as like a subtle, like, you need to lose weight, minty. <laughs> He's like one of those husbands. He's like, let me go prepare your shake. And then he put a bunch of laxatives in the shake. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I believe it. <laughs> I made you dinner, Minty. It's like a big plate with just one tiny roasted onion in the center. Oh my gosh, yeah. You trying to say something to Hades? Dude, you know, it's so stupid though, because when she goes to Hades' room of requirement, he's got a steak dinner and bonbons there. Yeah. And he eats that stock. No, he, he ate the steak for himself and he knew she was a, a vegetarian. Or she's a vegetarian, not a vegan. No, she's not a vegan. Um, okay. So, yeah, because she had halloumi at yeah. Hera's place. Mm -hmm. So he knew she was a vegetarian. So in this room of requirement, he whipped himself up a, a, a rare steak. And then for her, he just got her a bunch of tiny cookies. Here you go, dear. Eat to your fill. But not too much. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm counting them. <laughs> yeah, especially when you think of that. Like, he could have put anything in front of her. He could have put an entire salad bar in front of her. And he just yeah. put, like... Tiny macaron. You could have put falafel. What a controlling prick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Douche. But why not just do that again instead of getting takeout? She says, I've never had takeout before. In that case, we should definitely splurge while they're, like, walking into yeah, the Yeah, see, look, her hobbit feet, her feet are to two totally different sizes. And you're right, they are shaped, like, more square and, like, actually, like, chubby mm -hmm. wide. And she's definitely not up to his hip. Like, her height doesn't match being no. up to his hip. And then hair is in their kitchen wearing the wine glasses. Hair's such a douche. She just showed up completely unannounced. But she looks like a potato in that next panel. I know. She looks like a cross-eyed potato with a mole on it. I know. Oh, man. Persephone isn't up to his hip in this one. Why is she shaped? She definitely was not shaped like that when she wore the peplum. And she wasn't shaped like that when she got out of the bath. She mm -hmm. looked like a kid in that panel. Mm-hmm. And she was up to his hip, now she's up to his shoulder. Yeah. Hera has an invisible fidget spinner. Am <laughs> I interrupting? <laughs> yeah. Never mind, I don't care. And then he's just gone. Did Hera not realize that Persephone was at Hades' house and that's why she was in his office? Where'd she think she was staying? Like, she just showed up unannounced at Hades' place and she knew Hades was harboring Persephone. Where'd she think she was staying? I don't know. Clearly, she doesn't think. Yeah, because Zeus saying, why aren't you backing me up, has nothing to do with Apollo. Like, what made her decide, okay, now is the time I need to go talk to Persephone about Apollo? Like, what was the, what was the inciting incident that sparked this thought in her brain? If only Hera talked to herself out loud and we could understand what she was thinking. If only Rachel had a theory of mind so she could realize that, like, Q does not relate to B. <laughs> like, unless you friggin' draw the line between Q and B, which hasn't been drawn yet. No. So she says, never mind, I don't care, can we talk? Uh, sure, hold on. And she's not gonna turn her in into Zeus. Zeus. We get this horrible, low DPI zoom in of Hades. It's creepy. I, what does it mean? This is so easy to draw, just draw it again. But why, why is it there? <clears throat> I don't she know. Says, you have she says, word. I'm not going to turn her in, and then he looks like that. I don't go- I don't get it! And how is it that she couldn't even get the eyes to be the same size? She could've just copied and pasted it at that I know! Point. <laughs> and so Persephone says, thank you for coming to visit me. I'm so sorry about everything that's happened. Don't worry about all that diplomatic nonsense. I'm here for a different reason. Her hands. Oh my god, did you see her I hands? I know, I know. One of them <laughs> is a big prosthetic glove that's stuffed full of cotton. <laughs> <laughs> that's like a gardening glove, man. <laughs> I know! I know something, at least. I think I know something. You know uh, nothing. <laughs> you stupid uh, idiot here. 110 episodes later, I know something, at least I think I know something. <laughs> two years, over two years later. You see, I have visions. No one asked. No one cares. 
was like that scene in One Punch Man where Geno starts going into his back. Exactly. And Saitama's like dying of boredom. Exactly. I can't really control what they happen. And sometimes the information's not clear. They were stronger when I was young. No one asked. No one cares. And the background is like half dissolved. I know. I suppose I'm too much of a drunk now. Your m majesty. Oh, and we went back to look at whether or not she called her your majesty in earlier chapters. She didn't. Mm -mm. Persephone called her Hera mm -hmm. when she showed up to give her the rose cuttings. Yep. She never called her your majesty. Nope. It's almost like Rachel never read her own comic. Yeah, and again, eyes. Totally different yeah, sizes. Yeah, totally different sizes. Hera. Hera is fine. Yeah, you were calling her Hera before. I had a vision about you. And so, so one. So one. <laughs> I went to Zeus about it and said I could guess myself. I thought perhaps I was mistaken. If I was Persephone, I'd be like, me and someone, what do you mean? Like, me and my mom? Me and Artemis? I think this is the point where she, the, uh, Rachel's confirming that Hera saw Apollo from the get. So I'm sitting here going, why did it take you a week and a half and Persephone to be freaking arrested to do something about it? If you knew that he was the one in the vision... And you didn't need any other evidence to confirm it. Why did it take you this long? No, but she gets visions when she touches people, right? I don't know what sparks the vision. Never clear. Apollo touched her when she was disguised as uh, Persephone, and that's when he got burned. But she didn't have a vision about no, him. No, she didn't then. have a vision about him. It's never explained. She, I, I don't think she gets another vision. That was the only vision she got in the entire story. Wow. It's been a week and a half she hasn't gotten another vision. She didn't get a vision of Persephone getting arrested. No. But I disguised myself as you to fool your mother when you were missing. Okay. Oh, this is the this is the panel where I was like, where did the dog come from? Well, they showed the dog. I was actually paying attention to that. Let me let me show you where they. Show I know they show the dog like fifty panels before. Right there. Yeah, like fifty panels before, but they never showed Persephone bending down to pick it up. It's not like Let's Play. No, or exactly. It's D not takes, like Let's Play. Yeah, D takes Bowser from Sam and is holding Bowser for the rest of the. She game. she's just holding the dog suddenly in the next panel. Mm -hmm. And I ran into Apollo. I had an interaction with him when he thought I was you, which led me to believe that maybe I was not mistaken. Okay, so she knows. Well, she saw it in the original. This is confirming that she saw it in the original vision. Yeah. Which makes me go again. Why did it take you so long to investigate? And if you saw Apollo assault Persephone in your vision a week and a half ago. Why did you tell Eros? And she, the only reason yeah. she confirmed it when she talked to Apollo was purely by chance that she ran into him in an alleyway. Yeah. It, it had nothing to do with her going out of her way to investigate. In fact, the first thing she did, again, after Persephone came to her house, was ship her with Hades. So getting her with Hades is more important than getting to the bottom of who assaulted her? A little insensitive, right? <laughs> a little horrible. Right? Why do people like this character? We stand a queen. She's a freaking drunk a-hole. <laughs> she's such, and she, on top of that, she's like racist as well. She's racist. She's selfish. She's a douche. She's materialistic. She's manipulative, materialistic, a liar. She cheated on Zeus. Hypocritical. Douche. Yeah. I know this is a lot, but I have to ask... Goddess, I need to know, was I mistaken? They're all beating around the bush, too. I know, so annoying. You are not mistaken. <laughs> the bush shows up in the next panel. Yeah, beating around the bush. So Persephone gets up, and then in the next panel, she's suddenly facing away. How did she get over there? Exactly, with the, bush, with the bush covering her butt. No. They just came out of nowhere. Oh my god. The conspicuous bush. She had to, like... Because it's so close to the sofa. It's so close to the sofa, she had to, like, put one leg yeah. over it and then the other. She had to do, like, a pole vault maneuver Exactly. Over it. <laughs> they just cut to her with her back to Hera. This is, like... It's, like, comedic, almost. <laughs> Meme template. I know. Especially with Hera, like, putting her... This is, like, rivaling that four lines one, right? Lost? Yeah. And somebody needs to make a new template with Lower Olympus that's, like, Lost. <laughs> This is so bad. I'm so stupid. You've been suffering all this time. No, you're a jerk. We have to go to Zeus. Why would your first reaction be- Dude, you said you have my word. We're not going to Zeus. <laughs> Hades, you have my word. I, I'm. You can take me for my word. I'm not going to hand her over to Zeus. We have to go to Zeus. <laughs> I know. No. <laughs> you know, like... No, no, no. And she's doing... 
She's having a Paul Dano moment. No, she's she's basically striking the same pose you would see on friggin' Tutankhamun's tomb. No, it's it's a reptile from Mortal Kombat. Oh yeah, that too. Yeah. Leon, his uh, snake style. Yes, yeah, like praying mantis. Praying mantis style. Yeah. What? How did she turn around all of a sudden? She was doing mantis style to friggin' Hera. Yeah. You mustn't say anything, please. Oh my god, what a waste. So this chapter opened with, it opened with the stupid splash crap, horse brother, and then useless, boring, not related to the story, boring, useless, useless, boring, not related to the story argument, useless, boring, refreshed, boring, useless. And then like up when Hera shows up, that's the only story relevant sequence in this entire chapter. Yeah. And half of Hera showing up is a waste of time. It's literally this part. From this panel onward, that's the only story relevant piece of this chapter. Yeah. Everything else is a waste of time. Yeah. So, um, the top comments for this chapter are women supporting and loving women. Oh my god! With a crying emoji with a heart next to it. Oh my god! And then the one after that is y'all a horse brother. And then the third one is tell Hades, please for my own sanity, tell Hades. And then they had to edit it because people got on them for saying that. For the record, I'm not saying that she needs to tell Hades right this second. Clearly she should tell him whenever she's ready. I'm not saying that she needs Hades to save her or anything, but I think we can all agree that it would be amazing to see Hades looted on Paula because I love seeing that type of stuff. Everyone, everyone tried to cancel that commenter for saying yeah. tell Hades. It's called trust. <sighs> Should be called thrust, am I right? Oh my god! <laughs> okay. Please. Please. <laughs> but dude, Persephone! They're, they're not even in the panel no. in that first panel. No, dude. they're not. Like, I know. What the heck? They're falling out of the panel. They forgot to cut the bottom of the panel out. Oh, she's so manipulative. If you have any love for me at all, you wouldn't breathe a word. If you will love me, if you ever loved me, you will find I am a, a daughter, a husband. That's the, the mother from Oscar. <laughs> yeah. But if you love me, if you ever loved me, you'll find my little girl a husband. <laughs> this is like emotional blackmail. This is like the mom from Heather. Yeah. She goes, something must be done though. Everyone always does the praying hands emoji and it drives me crazy. Yeah. I can't just go on knowing what I know now and continue to see him. She's just thinking about herself. Yeah, I know, exactly. And like, oh, I'm uncomfortable. So I'm like... uncomfortable knowing that he's a rapist when I'm married to a rapist, too. Yeah. Women supporting and loving other women. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we love to see it. We stand a queen. Mm -hmm. That's why she stood by her man all these years, right? Oh my god. I mean, for real, though, why hasn't she gotten divorced from Zeus? Like, divorce exists in this universe because it's set in the modern day. Yeah. So why hasn't she gotten divorced from Zeus? If I could put up with that pig in my home, surely you could tolerate him. Seriously. I appreciate your concern, but maybe you should leave. Wow. Stupid rays of spaghetti. You have the sprinkler system activated. <laughs> What's he got on you? Why is Persephone so stupid? Why doesn't she just say... He's blackmailing me. She doesn't know what blackmail is. She's so dumb. Everyone in this comic is so dumb. All the conflict, it's called, there's a trope called idiot plot, where the entire plot derives from all the characters being really stupid. Yeah. And that sums up Lore Olympus to a T. Yeah. Everyone is an idiot, and the whole plot comes from everyone being stupid. Yeah. Like, acting like idiots and not doing the correct thing at the correct time, which just causes the plot to go. Because nobody talks to each other. Nobody tells everyone what they should know, and then when they do know XYZ thing, they do nothing with that information, or they do the wrong thing. Yeah. So I misspoke. She does know what blackmail is, because she blackmails Minty. Oh, right. So she does know what blackmail is, but she just won't tell anybody. She's an idiot. So she goes, what? There's more to this to tell me. What has he got on you? I feel like Rachel just wanted to milk this for drama. Yeah. So she had Persephone refuse to let Hera tell anyone about Apollo, because at the end of this chapter, she concedes, right? I so I was so. like, this is all pointless. This is all just soap opera drama. Yeah, she talks about the phone and the pictures. Yeah. yeah. Persephone, please, I want to help you. I broke my phone. That doesn't get rid of the pictures, though, right? No. No, you Neanderthal. I can be... Yeah, you expect me to believe Persephone's smart. The first thing she should have done 
was like do all this research on like phones and how to wipe the data from Apollo's phone. Yeah. But when he's not in the picture, it's like she forgot that it even happened. Yeah, she doesn't know. She's not tech savvy at all. E even then she could research it. Yeah, but she's not. She's like not smart. She's like smart in like a like a tropey way. Like not actually legit. She gets smart. good grades. Yeah. That's the level of intelligence we're aiming for here. She's no critical thinking skills whatsoever. I know I may seem like some old has been I know I may seem like some has-been old drunk whose husband cheats on her. Because you are. I'm sure I'm a joke now, but I could surprise you. What's with all these self-obsessed people saying everyone thinks I'm a joke? I'm a joke. I'm a joke. That's what I'm saying. The way that they talk, it's friggin' bizarre. Rachel? It's like dealing with a bunch of narcissistic divas. There's something you want to tell us. Seriously. You know? And yet again, Hera with the smudged makeup. Yeah. Your majesty, if you're a joke, then what do the rest of us have? What, what hope do the rest of us have? She's basically saying, yeah, you are a joke. And then you got women supporting and loving women. Photos. He has photos of me. Why do you have to touch foreheads to say that? I bet Rachel would never show two men touching foreheads. No. No. What are you, what are you some kind of nutcase? Never. In this comic, no. Their noses would poke each other's eyes out Dude, before that happened. she couldn't even show, when Zeus saved Hades, she couldn't even show them holding hands to pull him out of the mouth, just reaching for each other. Couldn't even show them making physical contact with each other. And the one potentially gay character, Eros, who's like coded as gay, is consistently given the worst outfits. Come on. <laughs> he sent me some, but I broke my phone. Does that mean they're gone? You stupid boomer. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, she's not moving in that panel. She just And Hera doesn't even say no. She's supposed to be shaking her oh, head. Oh, she's no. supposed to be shaking her head. Yeah. Well, that's dumb. Oh. Do you have the SIM card? What's a SIM card? <laughs> I think it's probably still at the motel I was hiding out but in. She broke her phone before she went to the motel. I know. So just, I don't know if she even took it with her. No, we never see that. It's just for Hera to go to the motel and then hurl a racial epithet at the guy who works there. But again, what's up with this panel where she does and says nothing? Leave it to me. She's like touching her stomach like she's got cramps. Or All right. Do you think I'm a coward? Of course not. You had a terrible experience. Right now, I feel as if I've been split into a million pieces. I just need time to make sense of it all. Well, when you're ready, I'll be there to back you up. <laughs> when you're ready, you I have promise. To. Yeah, exactly. I, I feel like... Dude, she's pulling Persephone's head off of her neck in that I know. Head. Yeah, Persephone's <laughs> neck grew like 12 inches. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> but the colors are different. The colors are totally different. Yeah. Why are you surprised? Why? Why are you surprised that two panels that have barely any difference between them also have totally different colors? Why are you surprised at this point? Are you comfortable staying here? I could find you somewhere else to stay for the time being. Oh, no, no. It's fine. Hayes is fine. Very polite. Very respectful. He wouldn't hurt me. I know. I thought just... I just thought perhaps it might be a little strange for you to stay with a man. Yeah, I, I would think so, right? Oh, That's... I can't say I've really thought about it. Oh, um, oh, we know. We know you don't think about anything. In fact, five minutes ago, I was telling him to swim naked with me in the pool. It's almost like nothing happened to me. But I've been split into a million pieces, Hera. Oh, my God. If you had any love for me, you wouldn't tell a soul. He's just kind of effortless. And then, like, Kara looks like Squidward in this panel for some reason. Yeah. All the emotional weight of that scene is gone with that, like, gag shot. I know. What the heck? Why does she look like, like, is she, like, basically having a flashback to when she had a, an affair with him? She's like, he's not effortless? I don't know. I don't know what's going on in her head. It was, like, the reaction shot that Hades had when Hera said something like, I promise not to turn you into Zeus. And there was that weird reaction shot that was supposed to be comedic. And it was just like, Why? But yeah, I guess, I guess, all I can think of is that she's like flashing back to when she was in a relationship with Hades and going like, he's not effortless. But it's, again, it's like that reaction shot that Hades had when she was like, I promise I won't turn you into Zeus. And he had like that weird derp face, but it wasn't funny. So it's like, I don't even know what he's reacting to. No, do you remember sometimes when we were writing stuff like stories? I mean, we tried to write our, um, our first webteen project. And I would tell you that when I was writing, 
I had so many ideas for extremely stupid jokes that would mm -hmm. hijack my brain and I would put mm -hmm. them in there. And I was like, dude, I can't turn it off. I don't know what's wrong <laughs> with me. Like, I keep putting in really stupid jokes. Like, a joke about, you know, one of the characters secretly balding. Yeah. That was funny, but yeah. it's like, it has nothing to do with what the character is right. saying. It's just kind of incidental. Like, I right. just thought of it and I was like, oh, let me put it in. Right. Rachel said in that interview, sometimes you think, oh, this character could make a really funny face. And you, you come up with an idea for a joke that you could put into the, into the panel and it would make the character look really funny. And it's like, no. Like, rein it in a little bit. Like, to you... Like, okay, as, as a for instance, right? Like, for me, I don't take the story of, like, the Butterfly Dream seriously. I could go in there and make the zombie just look friggin' stupid in the background, mm -hmm. like, with a dumb expression, mm -hmm. and give the main character's dumb expressions when he's running away, like a com like a comedic expression. Because for me, I don't take it seriously. Mm -hmm. It's just like, okay, I'm just going through the motions. I'm just drawing right. it. But the people reading the comic are reading the story for the first time, and they're expecting it to go a certain way. They mm -hmm. have an expectation in mind about how the conversation's gonna go, what the atmosphere of the conversation is, what the tone mm -hmm. is, because uh, they they haven't read it before. They don't know the mindset of the creator. So mm -hmm. when you put in a joke like that or you put in a funny face and to you it's not a big deal because you don't take it seriously, that is so unpleasant to read, you know, because it's so jarring. But it also feels like she can't get herself out of her own head. No. And she can't see things from the audience POV. And she also doesn't realize that, like, she, like, it comes off, you know what it comes off as? It comes off that when she's drawing it, she's bored. Yeah. So she's like, I'm bored, so let me make this funny. Exactly. So it's more fun to work on. And it's like, drawing a funny face is not a joke. It's just weird. It is weird. It's like, drawing a character with a really goofy expression just because you can doesn't mean you should. It just makes things weird for the audience where you're like, Why? It's like the editing in the Suicide Squad movie, the first one. Yeah. You could put Eminem music into the movie, like, randomly, just because. Right. But then when you're watching it in the audience, you're like, what the heck is going on? Yeah. It's like Black Adam was the right. same way. They started playing Power by Kanye West. Yeah, that was really weird. Destroys the That facility. was really weird, and it just, like, abruptly shut off. Yeah, and, like, because Hawkman's in the middle of explaining the plan to get in there, and then you abruptly start playing Power by Kanye West, you show Black Adam destroying the entire facility. And it's like, was this supposed to be, like, oh, we have an opportunity to make it really funny that they're about to storm the facility, so let's go ahead and do that. No. <laughs> that was weird. It's like, you're bored working on the movies, so yeah, you just decided exactly. to put that yeah. in there. It's like author appeal, because it's like, I'm bored, or like, it would be really cool if, but then, like, it was just for that one scene. Yeah. You weren't looking at, like, how it affects the whole story, or the tone of the scene. Yeah, or the people watching or the Or the movie. people reading, yeah, reading the, the comic or watching the movie. Yeah. All done? He's I wasn't sure what you'd like, so I ordered a lot. These are all vegetarian. Oh, not this one. I got it from me. Oh my god. Again. Why does he look nervous? <laughs> what's in the box? <laughs> what's in the box? <laughs> what's in the box? <laughs> like seven. What's Yo, in the box? what's in the box? <laughs> it's not vegetarian. What's in the box? I'm so sorry. You ordered all this food and I've lost my appetite. Have we ever seen Persephone eat anything substantial on screen? No. That's weird, isn't it? Yeah, like, I talked about that. Like, it's been two years. Yeah, it's been two years, and it's like, she can't eat a falafel sandwich. She expended all this energy. She said she overdid it today. Her whole body hurts. The first thing I like to do after a big workout, right, <laughs> is eat a lot of food. Get your calories back, you know? I mean, she doesn't even eat, like, sad eat pasta or ice cream. No. Like, that's, like, she has a drawer full of candy, like, hard candies and stuff. When she went to Hera's house, she didn't eat anything, because she's like, they were like, oh... Huh, because it was like some like white people food where they just had like bread rolls and fish and like a lettuce salad. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and like some cheese slices. They're like, oh, you can eat those cheese slices and the lettuce and the bread rolls. Yeah. And then Persephone was like, oh, I'm not hungry. Yeah, she was all Even though like Greek food isn't like that. Greek food is like a freaking vegetarian's paradise. Yeah, hummus. Yeah, hummus, falafel, chickpeas, Dolmas. salads, like very flavorful salads. Yeah. With beans in them. S uh, soups and stews, pita bread. Goat she was cheese. like, no, I'm not hungry. And then she walked away. So she didn't eat anything that night. And then Eros brought her a stupid half-eaten honeycomb for breakfast. Like, is she a hummingbird or something? Like, is that supposed to be cute that she never eats? And when she does eat, it's pure sugar? Yeah, you know, I have no idea what that's supposed to be. It's, like, so frustrating and annoying because 
I think of Miyazaki movies and how much the food like means and the the emotional scenes that are built around food. Yeah, like Spirited Away. Spirited Away when she's eating the the bun and mm -hmm. she starts crying, or when her parents are eating when her feast. parents are eating yeah. the feast. Um, you have it also in <clears throat> like uh, Princess Mononoke. You show the characters cooking. Howl's Moving Castle yeah. has an entire scene dedicated to cooking, and um, it's like there's a lot of uh, part of eating is like emotion, mm -hmm. and she never eats ever it's just bizarre it's really weird and it's like i know a lot of women like a lot of women relate to the idea of like eating when you're not happy yeah right like when you're feeling down you, you like eating like a slice of chocolate cake obviously that's not all women or but, a bowl of pasta yeah but you get a dopamine hit mm -hmm. you get that serotonin boost you feel better after you eat something yummy mm -hmm. and um like, women are also, like, shamed for eating that kind of stuff, too. You know, people always say, look, look at this fat pig eating a cheeseburger. Yeah. Like, what's wrong with you, right? So it's like, can you not just show her eating food? Especially when she's right? not exactly thin. No. <laughs> like, so it just feels like she's got, like, this Kim Kardashian, like, super curvy body. Yeah. And she's, like, very athletic, but we never see her eat. But All she, she eats is sugar. Yeah. And she was getting praise for showing her with stretch marks. And it's like, you don't get stretch marks from not, like, putting on weight right or like growing really fast or something so I, I just don't understand it i mean she's like sometimes she has the body of a weightlifter and weightlifters yeah. do nothing but eat yeah yeah it takes a lot of calories to put on that muscle you know so yeah and he looks like friggin woody from toy story in the background <laughs> there and he goes hey hey it's okay the hey in that speech bubble is capitalized. Lower yeah. lowercase that's the beauty of leftovers they taste even better the next day because like you said it's been an extremely stressful day Get your coat. <laughs> <laughs> Again, it's like, she's like, I don't want to keep writing this story, so let's have the bat scene, and then this is the infamous diamond scene. Oh, I have so much to say about this scene. So that's what I'm saying. Like, she just keep like, she has, like, like, ten panels of story with Hera finally finding out about Apollo, and then the next two chapters are useless fluff, yeah. you know? Yeah. The whole scene where they were sharing coffee, and she was dressed in peplum, and he gave her the invisibility coat, useless fluff, you know? She just gets bored and she doesn't want to keep she doesn't want to keep doing the story. No. No one will see you. It'll be fine. Trust me. Top comments. Am I the only one that is irritated that Artemis never realized how Persephone acted around Apollo? Persephone was obviously uncomfortable and depressed. It's true. Artemis is a dickhead and stupid. Yeah. A stupid dickhead. I stand Hera until I die. I don't. She sucks. Well, isn't she a little ray of F.U. Apollo? Huh? You know, like, isn't she a little ray of sunshine? Isn't she a little ray of F.U. Apollo? Oh. That's not very clever. <laughs> Shiny rocks! Oh, I hate <laughs> it's this. It's your favorite episode! I hate this episode so much for reasons that will be explained later. And they teleport. I don't even know where they teleport to. It's like the roof. Those are like HVAC units. Yeah, but that's not the roof of his house, because his house is like... A modern mansion. Yeah, this looks like the roof of like the this underworld looks like corp the or something. But it's not because the underworld corp is like one of the tallest skyscrapers. Yeah. So what is this the roof of? Some random building then, I guess. That that was really weird. You're gonna love my nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Look at his hand. <laughs> no, he goes. You're gonna love this as if he's like about to hit her with the club. <laughs> <laughs> what is wrong with his hand, though? I don't know. I don't love your hand. It's like Squidward's hand when. Patrick puts the net through it. Firmly grasp it! <laughs> really is. Here. <laughs> he has no grip strength. Yeah, firmly grasp it. <laughs> Look at her. Oh my gosh. Hold out your hand. And she's like having a moment. Yeah. Are, are these diamonds? No, they're just shiny rocks. Why does he treat her like she's a dumb child? Because he's creepy. I don't know how to play golf. Oh, this isn't golf. This is far superior. Wait, well, what are you? <laughs> <laughs> Smack! Rainbow filter. Oh, jeez. Oh, boy. Phew. The rainbow filter can only be done straight. So even though it's a curved line, the rainbow filter is a straight line. And it goes on like that. I know, it's a straight line the whole time. Even though they have this curve. That's really bad, man. 
And then you have a bunch of people, even Nyx, who is apparently in pure darkness, sees the freaking shooting star. When she appears to Hades, she says, you're seeing me because you have trauma or something, yeah. right? So, like, I don't understand. I don't know why she's there. Yeah. And then you have this really poorly done, really poorly done mortal realm with, yeah. like, poop finger trees. <laughs> And like, there's only stars near the horizon. There's no other stars, and then there's also poop clouds. Why are there white clouds in the <laughs> man? Like, what the heck? Look, a shooting star. You know, the Greeks didn't think anything of shooting stars. They thought they were like um, auspicious, and either something good was going to happen or something bad was going to happen. But they didn't wish on them like we do in modern day. Yeah. So a kid pointing out a shooting star is. Where's the light source coming from? I don't even know what the light source is supposed to be. Is it the shooting star hurtling towards them? <laughs> yeah! Oh god! It looks like they're in some car lights! <laughs> yeah. So, and then she says, whoa. He says, try it. <laughs> okay. So she wriggles her butt, of course. Of course. I'm surprised we didn't get a reaction shot of Hades. Going internally moaning. <sighs> smashes into some guy's window. And so this is the thing that I have a problem with. All right. Yeah. Hey, what gives? Is this Princess Cut Cubic Zirconia yours? So it's Cubic Zirconia. Yep. It's not, it's not diamonds? No. Cubic Zirconia is not a rock. It's not a mineral. No, it can't be mined from the earth. It can't be mined from the earth. Hades is called the god of wealth because he was associated with wealth as in nutrients coming up from the soil. Minerals. Mineable ores. Yeah. And minerals, like, yeah. like uh, gold, gold, silver. Yep. Zirconium is an element, but Cubic Zirconia is a synthesized man-made product that was made to compete with diamonds and you can only make it in a lab when you go through a complex chemical process that includes smelting uh you know freaking cubic like zirconium basically you have to like dope it without getting too much into it you have to heat things to temperatures of 3000 degrees fahrenheit yeah. and you essentially have to form it into a uh, zirconium and oxygen what's called the zirconium oxide mm -hmm. you have to oxidize it and it takes a lot of energy, and it, you can only do it through, like, technological means. The, the process that's used to make it was, like, patented in the 1990s. Yeah, that's why cubic zirconium didn't exist in the frickin' 1600s. No. And so, like, this is, like, the equivalent, like I said to you all the time, it's the equivalent of Persephone growing a Twinkie from a tree and saying, I think this one's right. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, that's a processed food that you can only make with modern technology. Chemistry. And well, so, I guess Rome exists. Oh my god. I mean, like, are you telling me that <laughs> Hades can produce with his body? Like, he can do material science, basically, like solid-state physics with his body? Is that where all the technology comes from that goes into their laptops? Yeah, he just poops out pomegranates. <laughs> laptops? Pomegranates? Like, like, yeah. like, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> That's what he does at work all day. He just locks himself in the bathroom. <laughs> it's so, like, ignorant. And this is what I hate. Like, I hate anti-intellectualism. I hate when stupid idiots write stories and they don't know anything about science and they just make crap up. It's like Ant-Man, you know, quantum -mania. mania. How can you, like, again, how can you shrink to the size of a quantum, which is a subatomic particle when you're made of atoms? And the pin particle, they say in the movie, it just shrinks the distance between atoms. It doesn't make the atoms smaller, it just shrinks the distance in between them. He would fuse. His atoms yeah, would, it would fuse be fusion. before he becomes subatomic. Yeah. It's just so stupid. And it really spits in the face of all the, the science and the technology and the human ingenuity over the past 200 years that makes it possible for some moron to draw on a tablet and write this crap. You know, all the technology that, that got us to the point here where we're sitting here right now talking about this, this garbage poop fire of a comic, <laughs> she just doesn't even give a crap about it. She couldn't even bother to look up what cubic zirconia is. She just put it in there because I mean, she's like... If Hades uh, was, like, golf-swinging diamonds, that would be a little out of touch. So let me make a cubic zirconia. If she wanted to have something like this, she could have easily had, is this gold nuggets? No, it's just shiny rocks. It's pyrite. Yeah, pyrite. I'm, like, a dumb idiot who's not... I don't have a science background, and even I know cubic zirconia is not... It's lab-made. It's like moissanite. It's lab-created. I wouldn't put moissanite in, like, a dark fantasy epic set in medieval times. Even though this is supposed to be modern day... Like, it's clear that, they're, like, Hades and Persephone, their powers don't extend to modern-day goods. No. Like, I don't even know who makes the technology in Lore Olympus. That's completely unclear. At some point, I think Hephaestus comes in, like Tim Apple. Um, 
But I mean, it's it's very like it's it's very shallow again, and it's just like really crappy world building where it's like I'm just going to copy paste all of the elements of the modern day into this comic, even though it doesn't even make sense. Yeah, you know, just like I'm gonna copy all the elements of mythology onto the modern day, even when it doesn't make sense. Like Hera yeah. not divorcing Zeus. It's just such a blatant like stupid. It's lazy. It's lazy, very intellectually lazy. Disregard, and it's just so infuriating to read. And then apart from that. Um, hitting cubic zirconia, princess cut cubic zirconia the size of, like, a golf ball into people's windows it reminds me of that guy who was throwing cashmere sweaters off his yacht because he used them for a photo, and he didn't want them anymore, and he was just doing that. Because cubic zirconia is still not cheap, mm -hmm. you know, and they smashed this guy's window. And this guy isn't a god. He's got horns. He's like a satyr. Yeah. And it's like windows aren't cheap to repair. So it's it's literally like that, that twit on YouTube. He's like a YouTube famous... Uh, person who has like a, a YouTube family like mm -hmm. one of those YouTube family guys who lives in California yeah. Los Angeles and he was driving a, a little motorboat like a jet ski motorboat in his pool and all the water was sloshing off the side of his pool into his neighbor's yard and destroying their yard wow. and he was wasting all that water when we know the state of California is in a drought and he was doing this for YouTube views and it's like, this is the but kind of But they're not stuff. even doing this for YouTube views. They're doing it because they're rich a-holes. And they're... it's like, you might as well have just made it a diamond. Yeah. Like, I don't know why you didn't make it a diamond. That would have solved the world building problem. And they're being like, a-holes anyway. Yeah, and it's like, like... they're being giant, rich dickheads anyway. Yeah. So why not just go the full Monty and make a diamond? Exactly. And they're like, well, no, like, Hades isn't wasting resources because he just made it from nothing. And it's like, that doesn't matter. Uh, a billionaire can buy something like it's nothing because they have a billion dollars. That doesn't mean that that's... Uh, that thing that they can just buy, like it doesn't even matter, isn't worth something to somebody else. It, it does matter because diamonds st are still worth something in this universe. Yeah, exactly. So he's ba like the fact that he can make it out of whole cloth, nobody else can. Exactly. So it's like that's tr something that he was born with that no nobody else has. Yeah. And then he's using that power and his inherent wealth that he was basically born into to spit in the face of lower lower class, different raced characters. By also causing property damage that they could never afford to fix. Exactly. Like, this guy's probably renting. Yeah. And it, it it's even additional insult to injury because Persephone says no, and then she hides the golf club behind her back. And then he says, I'm keeping this. And then she says, don't you? And then they start laughing and, like, tickling each other or something and flirting. And he tells them to get a room. And then Hades says, this whole realm is my room. Like, imagine that. Like, it's so annoying. Could you imagine hearing, like, a rich douchebag having a party on a roof? You're trying to sleep. You've got work the next day. He smashes your window with a cubic zirconia. Or a diamond. Or a diamond. Just make it a diamond. Yeah, and then you say, dude, like, you and your little girlfriend get a room. There are other people who live here. And he goes, buddy, this whole city is my room. Like, why do people like this guy? He's so annoying. And, it, like, I saw a really insightful comment um, left under one of our videos where it's like, yeah, um, specifically re with regards to the Let's Play video, we said that, um, I, I said Daphne, but it was really Lucy, how Rachel drew this character as a sh and said in the caption, like, she's a sugar baby now because she couldn't stand to be under Demeter's thumb. She's living her best life in the underworld. It's, like, just gross because it's constant, like, this constant narrative that being rich and the pursuit of material wealth is the only thing that matters and like showing off your material wealth and everything that you own and rubbing it in the face of all the people that are much poorer and less well off than you are is like the dream. Like you don't have these, these characters never go like, oh, I have so much wealth and so much privilege. Let me try and take that and improve the lot of other people. Cause Hades is literally the king of the underworld. When does he ever try to improve the life of his subjects? Never. So it's like, like, it's just really gross that this is the kind of, like, it speaks to it like a pattern and it speaks to a morality and a moral compass and a worldview that just reminds me of people like Trump and Bezos. Yeah, and it's like that kind of, that, that praise of material wealth and just doing whatever you want because I own this place, it's my place, I can do whatever I want and glamorizing that, that's the kind of attitude that's like single-handedly destroying the environment. Yeah people in developing countries who are choking on smog and breathing in basically the equivalent of two cigarettes packs a day because of the pursuit of material wealth by corporations. You mean manufacturing American goods for American consumers? Yeah, and it's like, this is ridiculous that this is supposed to be the guy that we're rooting for. And, and, it's, it's, and it's ridiculous that this is being sold as a good thing yeah. to a younger audience. Yeah. And it's ridiculous that like um, Rachel continues to be like so unbelievably tone deaf both in the way that she writes female characters and the way that she writes, like, the idealized life, 
which is basically just to be extremely rich, do nothing with that privilege except rub it in the faces of others. Not even get an education. No. She goes to college. She goes to college for two weeks. Yeah. No, a week. Yeah. On that panel, you see his wrist. (sighs) Bone wrist. (laughs) Tiny hand. Yeah. I believe you said you were going to help me improve my form. Processing, processing, processing. Oh my god. Oh my god, he looks deranged. Right? He, he looks like a Susian villain. He creeped me out. He looks like, <laughs> he looks like the one slur. It's so creepy. Right? He looks like oh the my slur. god. Those eyes. Yeah, those horrible eyes, I right? Know. And she's extremely short again in this panel. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. She's very short and he's very tall. He says you just need to adopt a wider stance and adjust your grip. You know, if he's that much taller than her, his butt should be like three feet away from her. Yeah. He wouldn't be able to do the adjust your form thing. No. He would have to put her on a friggin' step stool. Mm -hmm. Oh, the flowers finally came back. And then he like drools a little bit or something. No, he's got a flower petal in his mouth. How did that get there? I don't know. She looks odd in that panel. That meeting went terrible. Cut to Zeus. I don't care, bro. I don't know why Hades is being so difficult. <laughs> have you noticed that Zeus has like the dumbest monologue? No, he does the thing. Like, I'm hungry. Why am I hungry? I haven't eaten anything three hours later. I didn't eat anything and I'm still hungry. You know, it's horrible. And he's in a different time and place, but he's thinking about, and he just had an argument with Hera, but he's thinking about a meeting that happened like earlier that day. Yeah. Like, what prompted this line of thinking? No, the dialogue gets even worse. All I want to do is make an example out of Persephone so I can retain the stuff. <laughs> and, you know, again, Lore Olympus is not supposed to be a comedy. It's not supposed to be a comedy, but this is horrible, like, stupid, flippant writing that is just insulting. It's just repeating the same thing over and over again in really, like, obvious terms. This cage is so poorly drawn, dude. Yeah, she could just get out. She could just slip through right, right through the front. She can fit through the front. There's no bar in front of her face. No, and then there's that other problem. She couldn't possibly be a fertility goddess. Who told him that she was a fertility goddess? What does it have to do with Hera's argument? Where did he learn this information? What? How does he know that she's a fertility goddess? How does he know? But then again, the power that she supposedly displayed... No one in the Pantheon could even fathom what that really means. I don't know what you What are you talking about? I don't know what you really mean, bro. What is going on? Being a fertility goddess means you can grow big? No one in the Pantheon could fathom what that really means. And passes on the wrong syllable. No, but here's the thing. In episode 40-something, when Hades was showing her around the underworld, he assumed she was a fertility goddess, like, he's met loads of them before. Yeah. And he was like, oh, I just assumed you were a fertility goddess. Like, they were, like, very common. Yeah. But now, Zeus is like, no one in the Pantheon could know what that means. But Hades, in episode 40-something, it was, like, common knowledge. Yeah, that's why the Shades reacted the way they did. Yeah. And Hades, when he said, do you think you could do it again? He didn't go like, that's a fertility goddess power. Hey, remember when I told you to look into that a hundred chapters ago? Have you ever looked into it? No, I didn't. In fact, I haven't called Demeter since they came to the Underworld. Or the Mortal Realm. Or Olympus. (laughs) The truth behind this is just an old wives' tale as far as anyone is concerned. And I'd like to keep it that way. What is he talking about? The truth behind what? I think he's trying to say that fertility goddesses are just an old wives' tale. But if they're mythical, then why does Hades assume... That she's a fertility god. That'd be like if you met somebody who's pale and goes like, you're a vampire, right? When vampires are a myth. Oh my god. That'd be like if I met you the first day of work and I was like, you're a vampire, right? <laughs> Me? Sorry, <laughs> I didn't stock any blood. And then later on I was like, the vampires are just a myth. Oh my <laughs> what? god. What? No. What is going on? It's so bad. Hey, boss. Hermes. Where is, where is Hermes? <laughs> what is that background? I don't know. Why is he in the dark? You must be <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> Zeus is such a friggin' idiot, man. <laughs> he's so stupid. <laughs> Retrograde, 
there's a right where the amnesia kicks in. <laughs> it's like that scene where he's like Carrie Ann Moss totally like destroys Guy Pierce. But wait, Hermes went to their house that morning, and we've seen everything that Hades and Persephone did after that point. So, and then Hermes is on the, the group call, Zoom the Zoom call. call. Yeah. So he never told Zeus before the call, hey, I, I couldn't get Persephone for you because Hades refused to give her up. But Hermes told Zeus that Persephone was at Hades' house. Cause he yeah, starts because the Zoom call otherwise how would he know that, he was, that she was there in the Zoom call? Yeah. He starts the Zoom call with, hey, Hermes told me that you have Persephone. Is that true? So why is he asking? <laughs> why? This conversation feels like it took place before the Zoom call. I know it does, but then he's starting off the thing with that meeting went terribly. It's just horrible. <laughs> and then you've got this idiot doing the emoji <laughs> prayer hands again. Yeah, about that. Dude, how did he know that she was at his house in the beginning of the Zoom call if Hermes is telling him this now? He says Hermes told me. He says Hermes told me she was at your house. I mean, did he? Can you yes. go back and check? Yes. It was muted. Episode 135. I spoke with her. Oh my god! Expire. <laughs> what? I must expire. Oh my god! That is such a big continuity error. And it's repetitive and it, like, if that's already happened, then this is such a waste of time. It is a waste of time. It's only to get confirmation that Hermes has a crush on Persephone. So, I don't have her. Oh, that's super awkward. You know, since you're already in trouble because clearly you're involved in this whole thing. Yeah. Oh my god. So you bad. try arresting her. She's got those big doe eyes. Not you too. What is it about this woman? And then... Friggin' Aries is just in the back. You know, the whole reason she has Hermes, it's like you said, she just wanted to have this joke where Hermes and Aries are both in love with Persephone. First Hades, then Apollo, and now you. What is Aries even standing on? That's a window in the background, right? No, he's, uh, he's like tiptoeing around. Yeah, but that's a window with blinds. Yeah. So where is Aries? I don't know. Is the window, like, just floating in midair? Is that like a hallway? I don't know. Who next? Aries? Like, what is this background? It's just a bunch of lines. Yeah, I don't know why he's doing that. Her commitment to an academic education really does it for him. All me. two weeks. All two weeks. Of you mean, commitment. I bet he, so I guess he doesn't love her anymore after the, after the time skip, because she goes to college for a week What's and quits. What's hand? I don't know. That's what, what I was wondering. <laughs> Their lobster claws. <laughs> the meat hooks. <laughs> An academic education? Sigh. Dude, you're not one to talk, Zeus. You're an idiot, too. He failed every grade they ever put him in. <laughs> he failed out of kindergarten, <laughs> Zeus. Look, we can get to the bottom of this later. It pains me to say this, but until Persephone's trial, you're under house arrest. Oh, oh you were right. punishment that he right. gets, yeah. And then he gets some... That was totally pointless. That was completely pointless. Rachel's diarrhea splats. <sighs> I told you, I saw her in Hades' office, and they were looking pretty chummy to me. Like, how? She's they were the looking at each other intensely. Oh, God. Good thing there's no one in the background. I forgot that Thanatos is drawn like such an afterthought. Yeah, <laughs> Thanatos looks like Shino from Naruto in this sequence. <laughs> Bug boy. <laughs> what is he wearing? I don't know. They were looking at each other intensely? That doesn't mean anything. I'm telling you, Hermes is right. I hate to say this, but I don't think Hades is interested in you. He's in Olympus. Why do they keep... Why does Rachel keep have like having Minthy look down at her chest like she's less of a woman for not having as big boobs as Persephone? Well, I mean, she's looking down at the phone. No, she's holding her... She's holding her shirt open. Yeah. And this isn't the first time she's done this. In, uh, right after Minthy runs into Persephone, she goes to the bathroom and like looks at her chest in the mirror. And it's just disgusting. And then she's angry. What do you know? You couldn't possibly understand the complexities of the type of relationship we have. She, I mean, honestly, she has a better relationship with Hades and Persephone. Yeah, but she's just become a caricature at this she point. She has, because Rachel hates her, and she hated seeing all the comments that were sympathetic to her. And you know, she's also torpedoing the Thanatos and Minty ship, too. Yeah. Because she can't even stand to have Minty, like, change for the better and end up with Thanatos. No. She freaking hates Minty. Is that... 
Daphne? This part of the comic gets really stupid. Okay, so this one's called 139, Up Too Close. Oh, Jesus. Rattle, rattle. Hey, I'm home. Oh, infamous bread coon. Oh, yeah. Where is... Wait, is she... Does she have it strapped to her back? Yeah, she's got, like, a backpack on with bread in it. And then, like, green mold <laughs> in the other bag. And then behind her is putrid gas. <laughs> driveway and that's all her gas <laughs> oh my god <laughs> i'm sorry they didn't have the flavored water you like so i grabbed soda instead why is she looking behind her the door is behind her oh hey echo was she playing with apollo's butt in that <laughs> i guess no but how convenient that all these characters know each other and room with each other because we saw the same thing with um freaking apollo and hermes it's like very contrived it's like a bollywood movie this is... Apollo was weirdly realistic in that panel. <laughs> He's not scared of Apollo. <laughs> sure thing. What is it? I've been waiting forever for this date. I thought you weren't dating him anymore. Yeah, me too. Days of nothing, and then suddenly a date out of the blue. You guys went on a date a couple days ago. They went on a date on Thursday. Yeah. And today is still Saturday. Yeah. It's Saturday night. It's been Saturday for ten episodes. Literally one day. Daphne. Days of nothing. She's like one of those women who like over exaggerates and makes drama out of relationships. <clears throat> I didn't want to say anything because I thought your fling with him wasn't going to go anywhere. But he was in Hera's office yet. He was in Hera's office yesterday! The same day of the date, right? Was it the same day? No, it was Friday. Friday when she was okay, looking for so Persephone after... and they found oh, yeah, Persephone he, Friday night. He threatens her the day of the date and then the day after he's like, you didn't tell anybody, right? Okay, so it was like a day a it day was ago. Friday. Yeah. He was in Hera's office the other day. He was in Hera's office yesterday. Yeah. She forgot her own timeline. And she just tries to cover it up with like the other day, the other week, the other month. Because to Rachel, it's been months. If Rachel ever got accused of committing a crime, she'd be arrested and thrown on the hammer. Because <laughs> she can't get her date straight. No. She like doesn't know. Like she has no concept of time. No. She can't. That's why she probably why she can't do pacing. And she can't do time skips. She has, like, zero concept of time. She has no concept of, like, just cutting to something else. For God's sake, just cut to something else. Well, she has no concept of time skips, montages, and she has no theory of mind, either. Yeah. Anyway, the other day, uh, he was in Hera's office the other day, he tried to apply to marry Persephone. I don't think he's over her at all. Yeah, he just raped her a week and a half ago. Yeah. No, no, he, he raped her, like, 13 days ago. It was Sunday. Almost two weeks ago. Yeah. Frankly, he has a weird energy. She's oh. smelling the farts from outside. They're still <laughs> percolating in the air. Oh my god, what's wrong with their mouth? I don't know. Everyone looks like, everyone looks like the fish in Spongebob mm -hmm. in this season. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's a misunderstanding? The marriage license? Daphne's an idiot. Daphne sucks. Like, period, end of story. Her female friend is trying to warn her about a literal rapist. And she's like, maybe it's just a misunderstanding. Hey. I really want the D. Women loving and supporting each other. <laughs> Crying emoji, heart emoji. Praying hands emoji. Praying hands emoji. Like and repost. <laughs> I don't really see how it could be a misunderstanding. The O de pungent gas. <laughs> Echo tray part two. Oh yeah. <laughs> Cue the music. <laughs> do, 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 do. Hey, Daphne's... we better get going soon. Why is this in a different font? That's no. like his right font. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> Get out of there, Daphne! It's the same font! Is it not? It's the same font! I think so. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, man. What's with that reaction shot? She wanted to draw the women being cute and pouting, I guess. Oh but it's really weird. Like, in the latest episodes, have you noticed that, like, their eyes are, like, 90% white now? Yeah. It's very, like, It's creepy. It's creepy. And then Daphne says, Okay, I'll be right there. You're still going? 
very detailed shot of Daphne's cleavage. Yeah, it's weird. I'll definitely take what you said into consideration. Olympus is filled with rumors, and I just want to make up my mind. You can make up your mind after you're assaulted. Oh my god. Oh my god. She's like insufferable. I promise I'll be careful. <laughs> oh my god. Prison. <laughs> Wow, this place looks amazing. Good thing we have a shot of the place that looks amazing and not a dusty corner where the seats are made out of like toothpick wood and there's not even a tablecloth. It can't be amazing if there's no tablecloth. She says, I've heard it takes months to get a table, but they've only been dating for like two days. And then also, like, I knew you'd like it, but nobody else is in the restaurant. <laughs> I knew I'd. <laughs> because the rest are reserved for ghosts. <laughs> no, he probably lied that it takes months to get a table and Daphne being so stupid wouldn't be like, wait, but we only started talking like a couple days ago. Yeah, he just has Instagram. a standing reservation at this place. But there's no tablecloths. There's no candle in the center. So it's probably just like a McDonald's or a Chipotle. And since she's from the mortal realm, she doesn't know. Yeah. So what have you been up to lately? And there's all these artifacts. See, I told you this is the, oh, this yeah. is the episode of all the artifacts. Yeah, yeah. Have you been keeping up with the news? <laughs> this is such an oblivion conversation. I've heard in Tamriel, <laughs> mud crabs are on the loose. The news? <laughs> she doesn't read the news. Oh, there is a little candle. You mean the mysterious freak swan attacks? This isn't even funny, so I don't know why it's here. It's Zeus being a rapist again. I know, it's again. Zeus being a rapist again. What? No. I mean, about Persephone. And he's doing the Egyptian hieroglyphics moves too. Oh, uh, yes, I guess. I don't... You must be as shocked and enraged as I am. The candle set fire to Apollo's sleeve. <laughs> I was surprised, I suppose, but gods do wrathful stuff all the time. Anyway, I've been focusing on this new business deal for social media this week. It's really exciting. When I saw what, was, what had happened, I was outraged. Okay, I guess we're still on Persephone then. But... The thing is, she just started talking about herself. Yeah. So why is she mad that he's talking about Persephone? No, I mean, like, uh... It's not like she was like, hey, um, what type of cuisine do you like? This place has really good Mediterranean food, but have you ever tried Arabic food, you know? He's not even talking about, like, I mean, it's... They both know Persephone. They, they do. She's she's Persephone's best friend, And she supposedly. just committed, like, she committed a crime, an act of wrath, a crime, because mortals killed flower nymphs. But even if she... Even if Daphne thinks it's not a big deal that she committed the crime, she doesn't even have an, an opinion on the fact that an arrest warrant was issued for her. Yeah, and they're friends, you know? Yeah, they're friends. They're so why doesn't she say, like, oh, I think it was totally unfair that they issued an arrest warrant for her. I know, I mean, uh, gods commit acts of wrath all the time. Yeah. She doesn't have an opinion on it. She's just mad that he's talking about Persephone. Yeah. When he should be talking about me. Exactly. That's how everyone in this comic acts. It's very weird. It's like, dude, if, if somebody we both knew, mutual acquaintance, we sit down, we're about to film a video, like, oh, do you see the news about, I don't know, Elon Musk? Yeah. Right? And then you start saying, oh, oh I, yeah, you mean when he went into a Chipotle and jumped over the counter and started eating the cashier's face? Yeah, you know, like something like that, right? Yeah. And then I say, yeah, I guess it was kind of weird, but anyway, so I thought we could talk about this new movie today or something like that. No, not even that. You would be talking about yourself. Okay, okay, okay. So yeah, so, um, I was planning on cooking lasagna today because I really like lasagna and I have nothing else going on. <laughs> and then you go, dude, Elon Musk, like, that was crazy. Did you see how much his stock tanked when that happened? It was nuts. And I'm like, oh, we're still on Elon, I guess. <laughs> Elon no, Musk it wouldn't is... even be like lasagna because I like making food too. I, I would ask you for a recipe. It'd be like, oh yeah. No, so... farting in the bathroom. <laughs> no, no, it would be like your social media strategy. It would be something I'm not even interested in. It would be like... Oh yeah, so I was thinking about like either getting a, a chin length bob cut or like a bob cut just below my no, cheekbone. No, because you're interested in fashion. I'm interested too. in fashion. Okay, so like, oh, oh, I got it, I got it, I got it. Okay, so do the Elon Musk thing again. Oh, you mean how Elon Musk went to a Chipotle, vaulted over the counter, and started eating the cashier's face? Yeah, I guess that was interesting. But anyway, so like, I'm thinking about glasses and how one of my glasses lenses sees a prescription at one thing and the other one sees a prescription at the other thing. Now I know you don't wear glasses, but I wear glasses and I was just thinking about how interesting it is that I wear glasses. That's... well, Elon Musk, you know, like... Okay, I guess we're still on Elon now. I guess you don't <laughs> want to talk about my glasses and the fact that one lens sees it plus one seven, How do you five. think that would affect his Twitter? <laughs> Twitter takeover deal. Yeah. 
That's what it's like. Like, you don't wear glasses. You have no. nothing to do with glasses. You don't give a crap about glasses. No, he, he has nothing to do with social media. I mean, he has, like, a social media account, but he doesn't do that for a living. I don't even know what he does for a living, but I'm assuming it's not social media. He does, you know, chain and whip stuff with Helios. He for a living. <laughs> he oh yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, he does the sun god thing for a living. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess we're still presenting you then. Her defiant little face just makes me want to smoosh it. But also, I can't stop. Oh my thinking god, about this it. is so transparent. It's very transparent, and he has baby. He has a baby hand and like a baby, like a weird. Like his face is drawn like a woman's face. It looks like Persephone's face. Yeah, it does. Have you ever thought about getting a pixie cut? Oh my god. Please excuse me. I need to use the powder room. Another SpongeBob face. Yeah. Shoot. No dick is worth this. And then she leaves, but she's walking the opposite direction from. Like it looks like she's walking back out the door. Yeah, and the colors change between. The pens. windows are the other way. Yeah. The windows are opposite. This shot is like unintentionally hilarious. <laughs> I know. <laughs> like, what is that? Done. <laughs> stupid hand press on the glass and then you cut to a completely different window no well not only that she pressed her hand on the glass but she didn't push the window open there's no window glass in the next one no and there's like a weird there's like yeah it's, it's just it's not clear what's happening and she's like making a weird face she's not even trying to get her hand like her foot up no thanatos right Oh my god, he looks so bad. bad <laughs> he looks wrong. really busted. <laughs> he has a mitten hand. <laughs> One arm is like way yeah, together. I, I don't looks... know if it's supposed to be like perspective, but he literally looks, he looks like... like the hunchback. He looks like Quasimodo. <laughs> he, looks like, he looks like Quasimodo mixed with Pippin, you know? Like, know. What the heck is going on? <laughs> oh, hey. Thanatos, right? Man. Yeah. You've never been on a really bad date before? No, I'm an insult. <laughs> Oh, so you're making a run for it. Would you like some help? That would be wonderful. I'm coming with to terms with the fact that I foolishly involved myself in a twisted web of drama. Everything these characters do just revolves around Persephone and I know, Hades. I know. So why are you even cutting to them if they're just going to talk about Persephone I know. and Hades some more? Oh, I can't really help with that. First Because everything's again. about me. Yeah. <laughs> Follow looking at his watch while Persephone... Er, Daphne Whoa. and Thanatos hey, leave in dude, the background. Hey, dude, the restaurant's empty, even though it takes know, months to get a table there. There's not A waiter didn't even come to take their order. No. It's not like the waiter came up and he was like, the waiter was like, can I take your order? And then he was like, oh, I'm waiting for my companion to exit the bathroom. And then, you know, awkward smile, looks at his watch, they're in the background. Yeah. They're and watching. We cut to a film? Yeah, 1940s style film. 1940s style film. She was watching His Girl Friday. Yeah, or Casablanca or something. And then the couches are too small, even for Persephone. The couch is way too small. Yeah, the size is all wrong. The size is, like, it's so small that if you sat up, it would basically just, the, the back would only cover your butt crack. Yeah, it's like a, it's not even a sofa. It's, it's like, like a dog bed. An ottoman or yeah. something, you know? Hades? Dot, dot, dot. Oh my god, they're giants. I know. And then, like, they don't even show her getting up. They just show her, like, just the rest of his body. Standing a huge distance away from him while the rest of his body got cut off. And then the dog with, like, <laughs> the dot eyes. Oh, the right. dog looks like a polar bear. <laughs> it looks like a child just drawing him a dog. Oh, my gosh. And then she turns it off, I guess. And then the TV is tiny, even though when they were on the couches, the TV was huge. Yeah. And then she gets a blanket, puts it on Hades. Blush, not falling for you is really difficult, and it wasn't part of my plan. <laughs> she sinisterly walks off with the dog, with yeah. the shush, and that's the end of the chapter. What a waste of time. Oh, one God. more to go, one more to go. Episode 140, <clears throat> pretzel, like my brain. <laughs> my brain pretzel. <laughs> Thanks for hanging with me. Was that Ferris wheel? Half submerged <laughs> into the ocean? Yes. <laughs> I won't lie. I'm disappointed with how things are shaping up. She only talks about herself, dude. And then when people try to talk about something else, she gets mad. Yep. She's such a binge. Yeah. Uh, it's exciting to get attention from an Olympian. I'd get such a buzz every time he liked one of my photos. And then I was like, you sound like such a shallow bint. He, he took a bite of the pretzel already, I know, and then he and now sinks he's his just, mouth into the exact same spot. I know, spot he's like faking- to, to suck on the He's bread. like faking eating the pretzel. <laughs> the inside. 
I'd plan social media posts for work and I'd find myself thinking, would he like this top? Would he like this pose? Dude. But like, you can always tell in Lore Olympus when it's something that Rachel's actually gone through because it rings really true. And this rings really true. Yeah. It's honestly kind of pathetic. What is she resting her elbow on? I thought that was the bank. <laughs> it's like a it's like a wall or something. But it's also slanted. Oh my god, quick say something insightful. Where'd the pretzel go? <laughs> he warps it in one bite while she was talking this whole time. Where'd the pretzel go? I don't think it's pathetic to like the pretzel is the title of the chapter and she forgot it after one panel. Oh my gosh. I don't think it's pathetic to like someone in earnest. That's we supposed to be help. insightful? We can't help but try to please the beings we want. Beings? That's not insightful. Sigh. It's just like, what's it called? Um, enabling. It's like, a, like, it's also like an empty platitude. That's like saying like, I don't think it's pathetic to eat an entire tub of cookies. It's perfectly natural to eat compulsively of when it's something that you really like to eat. It's not right to eat an entire tub of cookies, man. I mean, I like pasta. I'm not gonna sit there and eat, like, five takeaways of pasta. Yeah, you're gonna make yourself sick. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah, it's natural to like people and want to do things to look good to them, but, like, planning your life around looking good to a guy is not normal or healthy. No. You know? So... Red flag. That's what he should have said. Yeah. It's natural to want to, like, look good to the people that you like, but planning your life around a guy is not normal or healthy. But God forbid you criticize any of the narcissists in this comic. No. They'll just walk away from you and be like, F you, you're a dick, how dare you judge me, you and know? And Rachel will punish them in story somehow. Yeah, exactly. Like, Thanatos will go bald if he says something And he'll like become that. more of a hunchback <laughs> among killers. <Yeah. laughs> I'm pretty sure he's just using me to either piss Persephone off or as a stand-in for her. Ugh, I really don't understand the appeal. Again, me neither. All they do is talk about... Uh, Persephone and Hades, yeah. Mostly Persephone. She's just some airhead hick from the mortal realm who went postal. Spongebob face. You realize I was born in the mortal realm, right? She only cares because she gets personally... She yeah, she only cares because she's from the mortal realm, too. She's not saying you're not... Uh, Persephone's not like that. That's not true. But Persephone's my friend. She's not like that. Yeah, I know. It's about... It's, it's all, all about, about her. her. Yeah. But you're different. You're smart. What More makes racism. you... No, what the... <laughs> <laughs> you're not like those other dockies. <laughs> exactly. Got, you got some sentience to your boy. <laughs> I didn't even notice you were a nymph until you brought it up just now. But what makes him think she's smart? He, this is the second time he's talked to her. Yeah, what makes him and think And she that? just admitted that she planned her life around getting booty shots for Apollo. <laughs> that doesn't seem smart to me. No, and she got stuck coming out of a window. Yeah. Which was like two feet off the ground. <laughs> I know. That doesn't seem smart. She's also carrying out a croissant purse yeah. that disappeared. It's gone. It's totally gone. Dude, Thanatos also ate the purse. <laughs> he ate the purse. Pretzel ain't gonna cut it. Give, <laughs> it. give it the purse. Give me the croissant. But you're different. You're smart. All she does is flirt with Hades and take up his time. All freaking Daphne does is take thought shots on Instagram. Both of these drawings are just so bad. I know. They're very bad. No, the ones with Daphne and Thanatos. I know. Her face. Her boobs. Oh yeah. my god. It's just like a Picasso. <laughs> They're trying to leave her body. They're trying to leave the comic. <laughs> Get me out of here. And she gets special treatment. So? She's so dumb. So? So what if he gives her special treatment? weird face but special treatment dude it's not right for people to give people special treatment so what if white people get special treatment and black people can't drink out of the same fountains and go into the same bathrooms what's wrong with that she's literally bonking the boss and getting special treatment in a corporate setting it's That's not discrimination. Like, it's not like he's dating her and like buying her food and then is like i don't like how he treats her no every time they go out to eat dude other interns who do internships at the Underworld Corporation don't get paid. No, That's they don't. like the difference between, that's why you have pawn shops in the Underworld, because this guy is, he's this miserly douchebag who doesn't pay people and takes pride in having slaves, mm -hmm. but he'll pay her because he likes her. Mm -hmm. That's infuriating. That I mean, be... this is why, this is why workplaces don't allow, like, intercompany relationships in the same team. Because it, even if you, even if it's like a pre-existing relationship, like, um, I worked with somebody that I dated with, or dated for a while, and they wouldn't put us on the same team. Because it changes 
the dynamics of the team, and it could get in the way of an actual, like, job that you have to do. Um, and th we had a relationship before uh, we were both at the same company. Pre-existing Yeah, pre-existing relationship. So it's not even like we were dating and, like, knew each other in the same team. No, but your boss, like, and you guys were even on the same we level. We were on the same level. Same education. Same education. We would have had the same job title. Yeah. This is her boss. Exactly. And it's not even her boss. It's not even her direct boss. It's, like, the owner of the company who has the power to put her in positions that she does not deserve, that she has no qualifications for, which she's already in. Yeah. She can't do the work that she was assigned. No. She can't even use a computer. So she's vastly underqualified for this job. She only got it because he likes her. Yeah, it's like, and that, that makes or breaks your future, like, clearly. No. Because there's a huge difference between uh, somebody favoring you and giving you the go-ahead. Like, white men, historically, all the time, they're in the, the good old boys club, they get preferential treatment because they're more similar to the guys who are in power. So they go out and have beers with them and they go golfing with it's them. It's the same thing. Exactly. It's the same thing. The fact that they have a relationship, you could generalize that and say the preferential treatment is the exact same as the good old boys network, just like you said. Yeah. And it's the same thing as like, yeah, it's preferential treatment, but these guys get invited to after work things like uh, going on the golf course, yeah. getting beers together. And in those conversations that no nobody else has the right of access to, that's where the deals get made. That's where they get the promotions. Yeah. And that's why it's unfair. It's not like they have a relationship that doesn't interfere with the work whatsoever. No. And they're getting opportunities and they're getting advancements that they do not deserve, that they have no aptitude for, or they, they don't have the, the qualifications for. If you did a head-to-head -head test between them and somebody else who's not in the network, there's probably a more qualified applicant out there who would have beaten them fair and square exactly. if this network didn't exist. Exactly. And that is the difference between getting, like, $300,000 a year and a corporate suite and ha uh, being able to afford a house and have kids and a family versus having to work the same like dead-end job for your entire life that you have to keep working because otherwise if you don't work it you don't have any health insurance and you can't stop working because you have all these problems you have a mortgage you got to put your kids through school forever and and the difference between going through life on easy mode. Well, the other thing is, this is the thing that's been setting women back for decades. Exactly. In the workplace. But apparently Rachel has no problem with that. She has no problem with... Pre pre like, in the workplace, for women to get ahead, it's pretty much like, this is me too right here. Yeah. It's like, pay to play. If you're a woman, you have to put up, put up or shut up. Yeah. That you don't get access to the good old boys network, you get access to the friggin' casting couch. Yeah. That's the only avenue that women have in a lot of these situations. So it's like, for you to say that that's okay, but like, for the nymphs and the satyrs and the people who don't have access to the gods, they don't get a leg up, they don't get the preferential treatment, and they have vastly worse outcomes in life, that's fine, because it does, it, like, what does it matter to you, Thanatos? It's called collective action. It leads to societal change. Like, like, you must not believe in racism. You must not believe in misogyny. No. Because it's just one case at the end of the day. And how does it affect you, Rachel, yeah. if a woman's getting sexually harassed in the workplace? That's another woman. That's not you, you know? Like, that's very myopic and stupid. Yeah. And you could easily just shut down anyone who says that by saying you're myopic and stupid and you don't realize that this sort of treatment can be generalized to encompass an entire group of pe marginalized people. Yeah. Um, granted, it's probably not the best idea in a professional setting, but what I'm having a hard time understanding is why you care so much. Maybe you should think about why you care. Maybe you should think about why you left Apollo in a restaurant because he was talking about Persephone. Why did you care? Like, granted, it's not the best idea to be involved with a guy who seems to like another woman, but maybe you should think about why you care so much. You care so much. Like, Daphne is such a narcissistic piece of trash. I hate her. Everybody is, in this comic is just stupid. Everyone who's a good guy, who's a, you know, yes queen, every character who's, like, all the commenters are going wild for, they're in a, invariably a dick. Yeah. All the characters that are, like, lauded by this narrative are all a-holes. No, you can't convince me otherwise. Why? I care. She, she drew him looking extra stupid. I know. Panel, I know. <laughs> Sigh. Oh my god, I hate... What, what hate pose this. is this? Phone, please. Um... You're not going to smash it, are you? Why does he look like that? This is my number? Give me a call when you get your crap together. I like how the phone is just like a blank nothing. It's the pomegranate 67. <laughs> it's, it's output is in braille. <laughs> Like, weird wordless shot. shot. This, this panel is so weirdly small. Yeah. 
another shot of Persephone in front of a computer writing notes down because she's completely inefficient. I hate this outfit that she's wearing. Oh yeah, this outfit sucks. In this chapter. It looks like she saw it on Etsy and yeah. she just put it in the comic. Hey, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you doing? <laughs> how are you today? I'd rather not talk about it. <laughs> Sorry, I got caught up in Tower 2 all day. So she just lives in his office now? Yeah, so what day and time is this? They never showed the night time. I mean, Daphne was in a- Saturday Olympus, night. Saturday, yeah, Saturday night. night. So is this Monday morning now? I don't know if it's a time skip. Everything looks like nighttime. We'll know when they cut to another character yeah. and what that character's doing from context. So, I sort of got something for you. <laughs> it's a bunch of shit. Hades. It's a diaper. <laughs> it's Cerberus <is> this Duke. <laughs> Fresh Duke. Hades. <laughs> I can't accept this. Talk shit. Yeah. <laughs> Persephone, you need to have a phone. Why did he give it to her in a... What the heck? Yeah, he gave it to her in like a sack. <laughs> In a diaper, a cloth diaper. Oh my God. Why is she dressed like an elf? I don't know. But what's that expression she's making there, man? Mm, it's ugly. What's, what's this expression? I hate that. Everybody's so ugly. <laughs> I can pay you back. I knew you would say that. This phone is a factory second, so usually it would be destroyed. No, it it's wouldn't. It's literal garbage, no, you wink. No, it wouldn't. That's, that's a fake lie. That's not true. I if, see. If that's well, how... Persephone's a dumb idiot, so... Her outfit completely changed colors. Yeah. Well, I guess we shouldn't be wasteful. Dude, she's like one of those vegans who's like a vegan in name only. Where it's like, oh my god, I can only eat at Burger King in this entire airport. And I don't like the, the vegan Whopper. So I'm just going to order like a, a, a flame broiled quarter pounder BK extra double Whopper with cheese. It was the best I could do, you know? Yeah. Useless vegan. I mean, she has no, she has no moral compass. No. She has no morals, no ethics, no principles. If Hades gives her a convenient excuse, like the shooting diamonds off the roof, she's like, okay, seems fun. No. She has no principles. She's an unprincipled, selfish character. It's and and then she claims to be like, like it's one thing if you just take the phone because you don't have the principle of like wanting to be like sustainable or whatever. Yeah. But she acts all high and mighty about it. Yeah. She's like one of those vegans who secretly eats fried chicken, but then when they're not eating fried chicken, they're like, oh my god, have you seen the videos of, like, the factory farms? I could never. I've, I've met people like that, by the way. Same. They're same. like, they're like super vegan, but then they also like, you know, buy fast fashion. Yeah. And then they're like, what are you doing? You can't eat that. It has butter in it. Yeah. Have yeah. you seen the factory farm videos. Yes, yeah, and they have like all these plastics, like all this yeah. plastic trash, and they're constantly getting Amazon boxes yeah. delivered to their house, like one day shipping. Yeah. And it's like, oh yeah, real, you really care about the environment, don't you? Like, thank you for the garbage. <laughs> Why is his face just creepy like creepy face? Zoom. <laughs> it looks like something from Bat. What is he looking at? I don't know. <laughs> no idea. You can't be serious. Based on the information you gave me, this is it. What information did she give her? Persephone went to a motel. We gotta go retrieve her phone. How would you have found the motel, motel? based on that? She paid in cash. She doesn't have a credit card. How, what information? Persephone didn't... She said the motel that I was staying in, but she didn't say it was no. like called the Underworld. No. But it's a hovel. How could she possibly store all of her clothes, shoes, jewelry, makeup, and gifts of worship from mortals here? This is supposed to be a character that we like. This is supposed to be a character that Rachel likes. This is supposed to be a good character, by the way. I don't think she would have had all those things with her, your majesty. Good Gaia. I hate her. Yes, your majesty. Very shocking. She's saying this to, like, her lower class, oppressed race assistant. Yeah. Shall we proceed? Oh god, this crap again. It's not funny. <sighs> you should have died in that leaf blower accident. I don't even think she's holding a gun. She's holding like... She's supposed to be holding a gun. She's holding a protractor. There's no trigger There's or no anything. Trigger. Guess I'll have to finish the job now. It's the same recycled panel it's yes, earlier. Same sandwich and then she hurls that... Excuse me? <laughs> god. <laughs> Just, you're gonna have to bleep that out, alright? That's too hot for TV. God. <laughs> You know you're gonna have to bleep it out, and then in the in the actual panel, 
You have to put a star on the on the O. Or like pixelate it out or something. No, no, no. On Tumblr and Twitter, they put the star. Oh, okay. Just a star on a single single letter because that makes it better. Yeah, less triggering. We need a word with you. And that's the end. Closing thoughts. As you can tell, uh, our tone has probably changed after we took a break. We came back, and the year of 2022 has. Um, you know, word of the year, which is goblin mode. <laughs> we went a little bit goblin mode in this video, only because Lore Olympus is so frustrating to read. It and keeps it, getting worse. It's getting worse at like a crazy accelerated Light rate. Speed. It's like unbelievable how bad it's getting. And it's like, uh, Rachel doesn't care. And she's making a lot of money at this point in the comics run, I'm assuming. So she's kind of like rubbing it in your face mm -hmm. that she doesn't care and she's making money. <laughs> she's yep. like, I don't need to be careful. I don't need to keep track of my timeline. I don't need to have likable characters because who gives a crap? Right? That's her attitude is mm -hmm. who gives a crap. And we're still sitting here and reading this like a couple of pal like palookas, <laughs> right? Like a couple of jokers reading it panel by panel, <laughs> going line by line and going, what is she thinking? But I don't even care anymore because I don't like it. I don't like it. We're it thinking, we, we, we're thinking about each chapter, each panel way more than Rachel did. Yeah. When she ever, wrote it. Ever. And I know I keep saying Rachel and like someone commented like, my name's Rachel. So it's a little bit hard to hear like you guys slagging Rachel all the time, but yeah. it's like, what else should we call her? What should I call her? Comment below. Yeah. <laughs> what should we call her? I, I don't know. The only way I can get out like my, uh, my feelings half the time is by looking right into the camera and pretending I'm speaking to her. Yeah, because it's just shockingly bad. And it, I really, like at the beginning of the series, we're like, why do people like this so much? Dude, I don't get it. It's bad. It's like Well, it's really shocking because we just released our Let's Play video and a lot of the comments were like, no, there's no contest. Let's Play is way better than Lore Olympus. Yeah. And I was surprised because I've seen so many people say Let's Play is worse. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. I did a little bit of background research for the reviews of Let's Play versus Lore Olympus. On Goodreads, they have about the same rating. Um, Dude, that's an insult to Let's Play. Yeah, but the thing is, Lore Olympus has way more ratings than Let's Play does. It has yeah. like 7,000 ratings yeah. or something like that. And Let's Play only has maybe like 900. Yeah. And Lore Olympus has a lot of one-star ratings of people saying, I don't get why people like this. It's, it's offensive. Like, what's with the age gap? What's with the inconsistent art? Like Especially now that it's released in print. Yeah, I paid money for this product. I expect high quality because the books aren't cheap. No. Right? So it's like, what is this? This is like a half-finished product. Mm -hmm. What What is so great about this? Because you have mm -hmm. uh, NPR mm -hmm. talking about it. You've got the Eisner Award that yep. has been given. And you've got Webtoon calling it the number one Webtoon phenomenon mm -hmm. and acting like it's so amazing. And these people are just like, what is going on mm -hmm. here? And you read it and you're just like, no. It misses the mark on everything. Yeah. And it's downslide, like it's, it's backsliding so fast. It's just terrible. And if you read it line to line, the lines don't even make sense. No. And like she contradicts her story all the time. Yeah, it, it's like a thoughtless, careless project, a product, you know? Mm -hmm. It's just, it's really shocking how, how it missed the mark on everything. And it goes without saying, you know, you, like we said in Let's Play, you've got people who are obviously artists first, storytellers second. She, she is neither an artist <laughs> nor a storyteller. She, she got really lucky. Yeah. And she's riding the wave. She's just lucky. That's and, all that is. Like, people started reading for the pink and blue and the sparklies, and then they continued reading even when the pink and blue and sparklies are no longer there. And, um, like, honestly, I can see when people were saying, like, I liked the art better than Let's Play. Let's Play colors are not great. Yeah. But if you just make them both black and white, I mean, look at their faces, man. They look like SpongeBob fish. They're unattractive characters. Their faces... 90% of the time now are crooked, misshapen, totally different eye sizes, looking off into the middle distance, flat affect, no shine in their eyes. You know, like it's just an unattractive art style. If you put it in black and white, the story would be incomprehensible because everybody looks like everybody yeah, else they too. Do. Yeah. So you wouldn't even be able to understand what was going on yeah. if you read it in black and white. So, yeah, so uh, we hope you guys enjoyed it. We had to cut a lot out of this video because we were just like we didn't even care we weren't even trying to like hold back in some parts so i don't know how much of that's going to make it to the final video but uh yeah hopefully you guys found this uh informational educational enjoyable, <laughs> enjoyable entertaining and um hopefully the difference in quality of the video didn't bother you too much uh we're probably going to switch to this quality from here on out mm -hmm. because it's just nice and appealing and with that being said we've got two minutes of recording time left so we will see you guys next time, whether that's talking about Let's Play, Lore Olympus, or something else entirely. Same couch, same people, same Lore Olympus, different outfits. Different outfits. It's always a different outfit.
gotta That's be. the least we can do. <laughs> it's gotta be. <laughs> For the same Laura Lippis. <laughs> okay, see you guys later. <laughs>